what better vacation is there than talking to you about the One Piece chapter? <laughs> chapter 1093, Luffy versus Kizaru. Uh, you know, it's a pretty short chapter, but things happen. Uh, Kobe and Helmeppo. Yeah. Having their glasses stolen by a couple of uh, monkeys. Yeah, I didn't even know. I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't know those were glasses on Helmetpo. <laughs> Wait, what? What do you think it was? Like a bandana? I don't. I, I I don't know. I thought it was just like a like like a design thing. Like oh. I, I don't know what Oda was doing with those, but like kind of like at no I I feel like there was never a point where that was like he just he he left. He came back. He came back with those, and I'm just like, all right, don't. There's no reason to ask questions about Helmetpo, right? And then and then like. I mean, not to bring up the, like the live action here, but like they don't have these in the live action. Not right? yet. Like, not yet. He doesn't get this truth. until uh, until Eni's lobby. He yeah, still oh, has true, time. True, he true. still has time. Yeah, but we didn't follow. Uh, yes, you're right. I guess you're right. We gotta wait a little bit. He gotta yeah. earn these. Yeah, he, ha he I, hasn't that's earned. The thing. It. It's like Zoro's <laughs> bandana. Do you think he puts on those visors and he's like a lot stronger or something? That's it. No, I think that it's probably like the the Gojo thing. Like it's a nerf, right? Because because he's always had them on, but then it's only when like I feel like he takes them off when he like Kobe, like he like freaks out on yeah. Kobe or something, and then so that's when he's like really serious. I, okay. And that's why I'm like maybe he's just like he doesn't want. So I don't know. Helmepo I don't know what I thought. The they... visors is stronger than Helmepo with the visors is, is what you're trying to say. <laughs> I mean, this may or may not be foreshadow for later on, but like. Wait, um, do you think you I, can see I through them? I don't think it mattered. <laughs> like, it's Helmepo. <laughs> wait, wait, what if he's been training his observation hockey this entire time? That, you know what? That makes more sense than these being glasses. Because here's the <laughs> thing, right? Like, if these are glasses, these are kind of sick. But, like, I've never seen... Like, I've seen, like, the Cyclops glasses. But, like, but like these are thinner than that. These don't even, like, fully cover your eyes. And if they're, like, sunglasses, then they're... Look, even the monkey's eyes aren't covered. And then, and then like, how, is is the puzzle piece in the middle, like, where it clips on? Like, I think it's a cross. I think Wait, it's a cross. Well, yeah, the thing in the middle of Helmepo's uh, oh, eye band. It's, I thought that was a cross on the other side. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. See, none of this thing makes sense. Wait. I've never seen one of these in public. You see the monkey, right? How it's like doing this. Uh huh. You know, not not to bring it. I'm Asian. It's fine. You know, those ninjas over there. Whenever they put on a blindfold, they do the same thing, huh? I thought you were going to say, is this like a reference to uh, Kizaru and Luffy? Because Luffy's monkey and then Kizaru's yellow monkey. And then Luffy had those like goggles. He pulled them on. And then Kizaru's all like, ooh. And then he has like his one finger up and stuff. Like, oh, yeah, maybe. That's a, maybe it's... that's a good one. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, interp yeah. It's like interpretive dancing, but like with your eyes. Yeah. I don't know what's going on here, man. <laughs> Do you even know what the Tarshiers were before this chapter? Yeah, I did. But like, I feel like they're thinner and more petite, I guess. Like, like well, yeah, I mean, but this is one piece. You know, you got to fatten them up. Luffy yeah, wants a world yeah. where everybody can eat. And let me tell you, these Tarshiers have been eating, bro. They've been yeah, putting on just, some weight. I just feel like I don't remember them, their heads being like as big as human heads. Like their the skull. Like, I'm like, I'm pretty, I thought no, they I think were it's like an angle this. thing. It's an angle thing. It's an angle yeah. uh, perspective. It's all yeah. about, and you know what? Like, Perspective is probably the most important thing, especially when it comes to this chapter. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. And speaking of uh, perspective, um, <laughs> mm -hmm. Giant Luffy. Kind yeah. of frightening to see, to be honest. Very, very I do wonder if the rest of the crew has come to terms with the fact that he is the warrior of liberation or if they still think this is just a silly gear fifth uh, ability. They haven't heard like Vegapunk never said Warrior of Liberation, right? He just said. I think he oh, did, no, he, right? He, he, he said, said White the, the Warrior. The White Warrior, Warrior of Liberation. People, oh, oh, maybe, you're maybe, maybe he right, just yeah. said White Warrior. Maybe he just yeah, said I'll White Warrior. Check. Yeah, I'll double check. No, I there was White Warrior, and then it said like the people like he frees them, and then it said Sun God Nika, and yeah. then the, as long as people believe in them. But you're right; it's probably it, he probably did, but like yeah. Warrior of Liberation's interesting let me see it's and then even even if he doesn't say that outright I, I guess you could use context if one of your things is he frees people <laughs> yeah you could just come yeah. up with that y'all to be honest i could oh, call no. him the yeah. warrior freedom to be too 
The foolish and laughable warrior of liberation who brings smiles to all people. Also known as Nika the Sun God. I need to hear Vega Punk's voice because this could be the like the lamest. Like in I the hope manga. it's lame. I hope it's bad. <laughs> I hope it's like a, a stereotypical like uh, old school cartoon scientist where he's like, Nancy the yeah. warrior of liberation. You know? <laughs> Like something like Mandarkish. We had the same voice yeah, in mind I like too. That. Yeah, it was like it's like it's like you take Kizaru, you age it up, and then like you make it a little quicker because Kizaru, I don't know, quicker, <laughs> uh, crackier. Oh my God! Wait, what's up? <laughs> wait, wait, maybe Kizaru talks slow because everyone like a Vegapunk talks slow. That would be kind of funny. Like maybe. they just grew up together. Or maybe Vegapunk is hard of hearing because he's so old. So Kizaru talks slow for him. Yeah, oh. that'd be interesting. Hmm. Oh man, it'd be We're so coming up with funny. <laughs> It'd be so funny if, like, we get a thing where, like, Vegapunk is, like, you know, he's super smart. He processes things really quickly. Yeah. Um, which is, it's hilarious. Uh, I'm experiencing the the diversity in processing power amongst viewers. So, like, for example, like, my regular YouTube videos are, like, normal paced, right? Um, when we're talking here, we're at a conversational pace. I'm not, like, because, like, that we're not scripted. We're having a conversation. So, it's obviously a slower Imagine cadence. this entire video scripted. That would be kind of cool. <laughs> we should do that one day. Yeah. We should we have should AI try- write out our entire script <laughs> for these videos. <laughs> Why would it have to be? A- I guess AI would make it we yeah, we'd AI base and then we would ad lib and then we'd be able to, I think we'd be able to yeah, that'd be pull sick. it together. We should do it next week. Yeah. What's interesting too is that Kizaru actually stopped speaking slowly three chapters ago and then he just brought it back last chapter when he started That's his it. fight against Luffy, which is the thing, like maybe against Vegapunk and Sentomaru, he doesn't speak slowly. Or maybe oh, it's just the yeah. moral dilemma. That's also yeah. That would be a cool way, cool way to go about it too. Like he he speaks faster than them because they're the only ones who can handle it. Yeah. Oh, that'd be oh. A, on the flip side, he speaks light speed, and Vegapunk's like, ah, uh-huh, not all the. Oh like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then maybe he's like, I'm so smart that I have to speak slowly for these plebs. That yeah, could be a two. yeah. Mm, Either way, so one of there. these. Yeah, one of these routes is pretty cool. Oh wait, that was I, I never looked at the um looked at Sabaody for this, but um. Do they actually reflect his slow speech in the katakana? Yes. In like, oh, and so then they took that away. But then so in this chapter, what they do whenever they do the slow speech in the raws, they and, add the in, dashes. The, in the Japanese, they do the dashes, and they also like add up extra of the same characters at the end too. So, so you really mm-hmm. get a feeling that he is talking slowly. Gotcha. Even yeah. in that's what those dashes. It's so funny yeah. how the language has that built that dash. It's like literally for this thing, um, but. So then, so then he doesn't have that now. I haven't been able to see the Raws because like all the website. Yeah. He has it stuff, now. Like... While fighting Luffy, he brought it back. Gotcha. Yes. And then at the end of this thing, there was like a specific thing that at least I, I don't know if OP scans reflected, but TCB was just like, like he, he they extended. They were like long or something like that. I was like, oh no, they brought it back. They brought um, it back. Yeah. He's about That's to fall exciting asleep. though. I like that. I like that. I think that's another aspect of like this chapter. I love his quirk. Um, that they're making uh, Kizaru feel really cool. I really like Kizaru. Um, also, when I say quirk, I actually mean the definition of quirk. <laughs> I feel like what? I feel like my hero academia has ruined the word quirk because I I was talking about One Piece one time and I was like, yeah, you know, uh, it was about quirky. Kanjudo. I was like, yeah, Kanjudo has this little quirk where. He's right-handed, but when he's doing bad drawings, he writes with his left and vice versa. Like he switches his hands a lot. It's a, it's a little bit. Of, it's kind of quirky. And then people uh-huh. are like, people are like, oh, Cy forgot what what manga he's reading. He's thinking of my hero. It's like brother, quirk is a word. <laughs> quirk is a real word. It has meaning. <laughs> Luffy ends up tossing him around, huh? He like spins him a little bit. And I gotta be honest, man, Kizaru doesn't really care at all. He's, yeah. he's chilling, man. This guy's straight chilling. If I were to throw somebody and they said, "Hey, well, this is a pickle. Please be gentle," I'd be like, "Ah, oh, damn, man! Like, I'm, I'm not, I'm doing zero damage to this guy right now." Yeah, yeah. Well, it's not even like that part. That's like the worrisome part. Like, you know, that's that's just like 
you know, that's just like a one piece stick, right? Yeah. But my man, Luffy turned into the greatest pit baseball pitcher of all time. Like he channeled Utani. Oh my God. Like, yeah. like, I don't even know. He threw him like, it looks like a mock speed. Like he broke the sound barrier with this toss and he went, Kizaru went farther than he did when he like light speeded out. And it's still just casual to him. He's just like, huh, I guess I'm about to hit the ocean. And then he does my favorite. I think one of my favorite moves in recent history, which is I'm going to name it the schloop, the schloop de doop. Oh, like, how he's just, just like gliding, gliding yeah, in the yeah, air. Yeah. The best he's part just... is that he has his arms crossed the entire time, too. It yeah, like I don't even know what he was doing because it's it's crossed and then he opens it up and he's like preparing. He's preparing for the to sloop. do this, yeah, like for the, yeah, yeah, for the yeah. Yasukani. Yeah, so he he has it like this and then he's just like ha ah, sloop and then he just does like this one of these things. I'm like, that's just the, it's just like a like I I don't think I've ever seen such a serious powerful character like Kizaru that's very as an un-serious. admiral. <laughs> Yeah, that just is is pulling off a move like that where it, he looks like a fish out of water, like literally a fish out of water, and it's so funny. I, I love, love that it. Oda's able to do this. Like every yeah. admiral feels distinct, right? Because like <laughs> Fuji Tor wouldn't act like this, Green Bull wouldn't, Akainu wouldn't, Aokiji wouldn't. This is strictly a Kizaru thing, yeah, and that's, that's no, awesome to think right. about. Yeah, like. Like, can you imagine uh, Oda drawing a Kainu like that? That would not <laughs> make sense. Kainu just arms full, like, hmm, huh, huh, <laughs> like, fifth, huh? Like, a Kainu would have to be epic, right? Like, he'd have the Marvel landing. Like, like, like he'd, yeah. he'd lava coat the thing. He'd slam down. Even water like Kuzan. would explode. Yeah, well, Kuzan had the, had this in um, uh, Marineford. And the anime did it so well, actually. Like, he hits the water. And you're like, wait, and what? Like, and then like everything freezes around him. Yeah. yeah. And then he just he just forms up and he's just like and he's just super chill, which is like that's exactly what you're supposed to get from him. And it's like, oh, that's so it's I I'm not even trying to make these puns, but like he looks so cool. And then like a kainu looks so epic. And I don't even know what to call it from K Kizaru, but I guess it's just like laxadaisal, yeah, like laxadaisical. Laxa La that's the word yeah, yeah he's I just gotcha. like yeah shoop. <laughs> he's chilling man i, I do yeah. you think kizaru will ever get wholeheartedly serious where his whole demeanor would change um do you think there's a possibility for that or do you think even like at 10 hp about to lose a fight going all out he's still gonna keep this this uh pers persona mm, i don't think i don't think it has to do with um HP, I don't think it has to do with the fight, right? I just like, think that's how he is constantly. Mm, yes, like, like, uh, it's weird to say because, like, I Kaido guess, like, kind of against... changed a little bit because Kaido was like a grumpy old man in the beginning, and then near the end, he was kind of having fun, right? He was smiling, yeah, having a good old time. But maybe that's the Luffy effect. Maybe Luffy just changes your personality because he is the worry of liberation. Maybe by the end of this, we'll, ha we'll have Kizaru, uh, you know, cracking a having couple fun. of jokes, smiling a little bit. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I wonder if there is a alternate timeline where something happens to Vegapunk and then he 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 dislikes it so much that that makes him go insane. Maybe maybe it's something like like okay, the Gorosei. This would be a good example, I guess. Uh, someone higher up, they give him an order, but the but but um the context and what they do and what they tell him is all a lie. You know what I mean? And then oh, he goes like he, through he's with in it the and then new position or something. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, I could see that. I could see that for sure. Like when he's when he's abiding by something and then he gets lied to that could that could definitely bring it out, in my opinion. Um, okay. I don't know how that would come out, because then it, that, what I'm saying is like there's only a few people above him. So <laughs> then I'm just saying yeah, it's the, really just this... a Kainu and the Gorosei, right? <laughs> yeah. And then yeah. Celestial like Dragons, the... I guess. Yeah, Emu. Emu's there. Emu like, man, Emu pisses off Kizaru. That's a dark day. Whew. That's a dark day that's about to be illuminated. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Speaking exactly. of illumination, Lu when mm -hmm. Luffy throws Kizaru, I feel like this just solidifies in my mind that Luffy doesn't necessarily want to beat Kizaru one-on-one. -on -one. Because he throws him, and I at least how I interpreted this is that Luffy wants to stall Kizaru so that they can get the heck out of here. Like, nothing in this chapter makes me think that this is going to be a fight to the death. Or like, you know, um, a fight until somebody falls. It feels like they are just trying to accomplish their mission with Luffy trying to get out of here. And then Kizaru trying to find Vegapunk. 
Like, it looks like they're both stalling in a way, right? Because Luffy shoots him out to stall a little bit so that Vegapunk can get away. But Vegapunk end ends up going downstairs. And then Kizaru sends his clones after Luffy to stall him while he looks for Vegapunk. It's like a cat and mouse chase in a way. In my yeah. opinion. Yeah, I think I think you're right. I think um it it might not even be a stalling thing necessarily. And and guys, care careful. I'm not this is not what I'm saying. What I'm saying <laughs> is that when top tier people fight, it's not quick. It's never quick. Like a Kainu uh, uh Kuzan was 10 days, right? Like yeah. Kaido and Big Mom fought for 3 days and didn't have a scratch on them, right? Like Luffy and Kaido, yeah, it was 11 hours, but th that was a that was a like a very different context of what's happening here right because they were they lit like their literal only thing to do was fight each other versus here there's like nine different other missions going on and and luffy's prerogative isn't beating kizaru it's getting off the island like you were saying and so um i i, I think like there's also the nuance here that like luffy it's it's not even just like respecting kizaru it's just like we can't fight here <laughs> like kizaru like blasted through the vega force one because he kicked me you know what i mean like if he yeah. kicks me again who knows what else gets destroyed in order to win the fight on onigashima he needed momo to pull the island away you know how ridiculous and that he is he can't do that here too. most of luffy's fights are on a time limit like the bird cage yeah. uh what onigashima uh noah's arc like there's usually a time limit when luffy fights somebody over here, I'd say there kind of is, since there's, like, so many marines here. And I feel like one of the reasons... It... I think they explained it a lot earlier on in One Piece, but one of the reasons why you don't want to fight marines to the end is because they'll just send reinforcement. And it'll just be, like, an endless battle that'll, that'll just keep on going on forever and ever. When, yeah. Which is why the Straw Hats usually flee from the marines. Like, even though we could beat most marines out there, we escape most of the time just because we don't want to deal with the the hassle yeah yeah the um it it that's why it's it the context that we keep on bringing up is that the fight needs to be cut short somehow and we're we're seeing that like not not that we're right but more so like if you look at the chapter right it's like he throws kizaru all right guys let's get it together right like boom 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 this yeah. happens let's and then kizaru's back and then like okay we got to do this we got to take care of these things boom 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 and then vegapunk's leaving and then now we cut the fight again because now kizaru is on the vegapunk stuff right so yeah. that fight that part is going to be disjointed again we're not getting like a real one-on-one -on -one here we're getting a two people who are put in a position they're trying to score some goals yeah yeah exactly they're playing a sport almost they're playing a sport it's not like a, a like a well you know fighting is a sport but like more so like you know it's a team sport right now uh, we don't have we don't have a ufc brawl you know what i mean yeah like, they're not locking the cage one-on-one <laughs> -on -one, you know yeah that would just be football you know like we don't uh american football like Sorry imagine if it was uh, on onigashima luffy was fighting kaido on the rooftop and then Kaido just constantly tries to go downstairs to kill everybody else. You know, it's it's like yeah. one of those things. It's like, dang, like, how do we do this? But also, I say that now, like, oh, yeah, they're both kind of stalling. They're both not exactly fighting. And that can change next chapter. And I'm totally cool with yeah. that. Like, mm -hmm. maybe next chapter, Kizaru's like, okay, I can't kill Vegapunk if Luffy keeps on getting in the way. And then that is when Kizaru directs his attention to Luffy. And maybe Luffy's like, okay, Kizaru, <laughs> I got to focus on this guy. Like, I can't offer help to Zoro like he does in this chapter. He's like, I gotta, I gotta just hone in and just knock this guy out real quick. Things can change at a drop of a hat in One Piece. But just yeah. as far as right now goes, this doesn't feel like a honest-to-God 1v1. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, it, not to say that, like, you, there's not meaningful information given here. Oh, I yeah. think that's what the point of this fight is, though. Like, I think that's what we should be looking at this chapter. And there's so many interesting things with how logias work and i'm now so curious about like the other ones because in reality we've had we didn't we've never gotten a lot about logias to the point where like the two main ones crocodile and anel oh i pretty like oda like came out and said like yeah like with <laughs> things had to happen in that, those arcs for yeah. like the story I mean, that's <laughs> not gonna lie you know if crocodile and anel come back i feel like they're gonna be a lot stronger because they're not being nerfed by pre-time skip anymore like, you know, we're not just going to sprinkle some water on Crocodile and it's game over. Yeah. You know, we're, yeah. we're not going to hit Anel with a rubber baseball bat and he's done. 
and up until like um up and uh, since marine Ford doesn't necessarily count in my opinion because yeah we had the logias there but they were greatly um like inhibited by the circumstances as we can tell by punk hazard so we didn't get a display of that so then the only one prior to that and it's like it's almost apparent that oda was just like okay i want to show off logias but i can't like break luffy okay he's rubber Anel is lightning. Okay, so that's perfect. Like when he, na- that way, you I don't know, need Oda to bring You know, Oda was like hockey. rubbing his hands when he thought that up. He's like, he was like, I have an idea. We go to a sky <laughs> island, and there's a god of lightning up there. But Luffy's rubber. Like you know, Oda was like in the meeting <laughs> yeah. room. Everybody was freaking clapping. They were throwing dollar bills his way. Yeah, no, nah, that must be one of the best days of his life. And such a and home the run. thing is. What's what fun about idea. that idea that I I don't hear I don't think I've heard a lot of people bring up this like sort of offhand parallel is that we are on a sky island we are with a probably you know arguably if not as broken more broken than anel's fruit the light fruit it's just like not like obviously lightning is like you know it's like surface like yeah that's that's crazy but light can do anything to the point where it's like oda has to nerf the physics of light to a certain extent within the sea otherwise kazar would just be god and what we see is that, like, look, he is Kizaru blast. They had to do the same the... thing with what Caesar too, right? Yeah, he like, had to the do the same thing with Caesar. Kind of wild, man. Yeah, give that to me. Like, I man, give, give, um, give that to anybody who knows a little bit don't, about gas. Don't. Even it's it's game, dude. Like, this whole world is over. You don't you you don't understand. I'm 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 withholding so much not rage, but like frustration with like with like with with like the education system. Oh my God! One of no, my because sh- I, I say I with put- Caesar, you're like oh, Caesar could have killed so many innocents. <laughs> it would have been <laughs> well, over. Yeah, well, yeah, but like I, I posted a thing about you know my my thing where like Dragon doesn't have a win logia, which whatever like if he does whatever right but i was saying it's because wind is just moving air and air is just a gas and caesar has a vacuum ability he has airless world where he brings in a gut and he can create it he just doesn't because he's like oh i'm a chemist i'm gonna create poison and i'm like yeah all he does is poison now people are just gonna think gas is poison I, I think the main thing with why we're giving Caesar so much flack is because he's not like a foxy character where, you know, he might be a little bit dumb, a kind of kind of quirky, goofy. You know, he's not Luffy where he doesn't know what gases are. This is a scientist. Yeah. This, yeah. this is, like, you know, like this is this should be one of the smartest people in the world. Technically, I'm smarter than he's Megapunk. smarter than, than Chopper when it comes to medicine and all that stuff. Like, <laughs> yeah, factually. Yeah. It, it's like, dang, I don't know, man. I feel like next chapter, you know, like we're, we're like, mm. we're all like trying to see what happens. Like, oh, Luffy making clones, Luffy doing X, Y, Z. I feel yeah, like yeah, since yeah. we end off this chapter with Luffy, I like how we're just covering all the Luffy portions here, but uh. You know how Luffy eats the light at the end and it's like blasting out of his ears and like whole Nose, uh, his eyes. limbs and stuff? I feel yeah. like next chapter, it's going to start with Luffy using that as a laser beam like Cyclops. Yeah. Like no, he's just going to uncover his eyes and it's going to like just shoot at Kizaru. I mean, I don't think he'll yeah. do anything since he's also light, but I think that'd be kind of think- cool. I think he he'll be able to do it because um there's been a line um that I've been wanting to incorporate and now that I I'll say it on the video you know if this does happen people are going to immediately go and be like oh my god look at this panel it's foreshadowed since drum ki- drum island where um when uh, when chopper did brain point um Luffy goes is he going to shoot a laser beam and then and then <laughs> it's a, it's the thing that uh Frankie does with the with the hands the right beam. like fr- yeah, Frankie does like the Shikamaru like hand thing, right? So it could be that that Luffy does that thing because that's that's been a, like a dream thing since Drum Island, where he he like he believes that that's a possibility. He loves and technology. I think he says like, yeah. And then Doctor Crea Crea was just like, "What the hell is wrong with you?" You know what I mean? Like, and then he's like, "What?" This is, I feel like I remember him saying like, "It's every man's dream." Yeah, or something every like man's that. dream to shoot laser beams. And you know what? I think that's fair. Yeah, so yeah, I, I, I could see beam. that because Luffy has always done this. Um, and I think Brago has been covering it very concretely in his shorts. Um, I think I have a video on it. It's been a while. Um, but like Luffy sees something and then he incorporates it. My favorite version of that is Bellamy in Dressrosa did the bouncing thing, did all that stuff, which Luffy has already seen. But then when he defeated Bellamy, 
the like two chapters later, I think, or like three chapters, or very very soon after, he pulls that out against Doflamingo, where yeah. it it's literally like panel for panel. Like I, I'm pretty sure I do have this in a video where it's like you put the panels together, it's literally just bouncing just like Bellamy, and and there's countless examples of that, and. In this chapter, it almost feels like fan fiction because a lot of the stuff that, like the light clone, we were like, oh, I, I feel like a few chapters ago, we were like, oh my God, Wolf, it's instead of shadow clone jutsu, it's light clone jutsu and Kizaru and Luffy have both. And it's like, now that Kizaru did it, now Luffy might do it, right? Oh, yeah. And then, and then, so Tazmarn was saying that maybe by seeing the, the photon gloves, like now Luffy understands the concept of grabbing light and maybe he doesn't even need to have like the full like armament hockey to a certain extent which is might might be what happened at the beginning of the chapter and at the end and that's another thing too where it's like i just i I also think that this is a way for oda to display like um gear five hockey when it's necessary when it's not necessary and then also like how gear five interacts with logias on its own too because it's we're getting we're, we're getting very concrete visuals of when luffy's using armament and it's interacting with Kizaru very interestingly. Um, and I'm not saying it's uh, it's wrong or anything. I'm just saying that, like, we don't have the context to fully understand what's going on to the point where it's like a lot of people are confident about it. But then you put two comments together. I literally I'm pretty sure I literally saw a comment posted like a minute after each other. And they're like, this is so straightforward. It's just this. And they completely disagree. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> I guess it's it's so straightforward. Yeah, <laughs> and and is, that's uh, my point. That's what I said. This chapter is a little bit divisive when it comes to how people interpret it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, you know, I think I'm somewhere in the middle, but I, like I think it. I think it's a fun chapter. I'm, I, I'm a simple guy. I, I see, I see punches in a, in a in a page, and I'm like, wow, awesome. Yeah, this one is a good one for that too. Yeah, this one is a good one. Yeah, I'm glad we're actually going through the um the fighting sequence first because I do want to because it is about... a little bit disjointed. So you know, yeah, tackling everything else later will be will be amazing. Technically, we skipped the 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 Yasakani no Magatama. Oh yeah, we're like gonna that. we're gonna go back to that one. No, uh, so par the Yasakani no Magatama. Speaking of which, <laughs> he creates light clones, man. Yeah. And now I'm starting she... to see why he was somewhat confident in fighting Kaido and Big Mom, because he could just create mm -hmm. clones. Yes, yes. The clones and, have like, no durability, but. They're still clones, and it costed Kizaru probably no energy to actually create them. Like, yeah, it was like it was two in one. Like he teleported and he created clones at the exact same time. It's so beautiful. here, here's my question, right? What's up? Um, we don't have full context of what this ability is. I'm gonna double check. I didn't. I didn't get to do this after the stream yesterday, um, but uh, I, I'm pretty sure we were correct in um the, the la like not last time but when luffy or when kizaru used this in um in marine ford it was borsalino crosses his arms in front of him and uses both hands to fire a torrent of deadly light particles causing extreme damage to whatever they hit borsalino can control the spread of the attack limiting it to a, a single person or covering an extremely wide area it also has great piercing properties penetrating a thick layer of ice and then piercing deep into the damn they use the word piercing a little and penetrate damn the one piece wiki writer uh they were feeling very, something during that article yeah 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 very very uh yeah so so the reason why i read that is because um these balls of light are um they're when when he normally uses it it's just destructive it just goes out and it hits something and it explodes or it goes through something and it dissipates i guess afterwards so one or the other right um because the i'm saying dissipate because it hits the i think it hit the water uh when when law was trying to escape with the ships and it's not like it exploded on the water it just kept on going through and through and through so um i'd imagine until it dissipates and so um the important thing here is is are these clones like actually clones like like naruto shadow clone jutsu where he well that one's a little bit extensive because like each one is sentient on its own technically whereas he, 
at the minimum is like, is Kizaru able to control each one of them all at the same time? Like, is he able to divide his mind like that? Or um, is this j simply just like balls of light that look like Kizaru running at Luffy and making motions? You know what I mean? There's so many possibilities. And that's the one where I'm like, do these just explode? We don't know. But then he Luffy phases through them. Is that because he used armor Mahaki or is it like not? And then why did they just line up like 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 a bot, like an NPC? Like it literally this is like like a video game bot behavior when you glitch out the system and then all the the mobs just line up like in destiny or something like that and then you just like headshot every single thing because you lined them up with the with the oh, map i didn't even glitch. catch that when reading the chapter yeah he doesn't use armament hockey when he uses booming whip and then he uses yeah. armament hockey with booming stamp yeah exactly and i'm like that's why i'm saying oda is being very ex like like oh. he's showing us the difference of gear five armor mahaki logia all in one and i don't think a lot of people are realizing like this is not like a fight this is this is oda like hey guys you guys have been complaining you guys want to know what hockey does here i'm not gonna write it out for you you need armor and hockey to hit kizaru yeah, but that and then he hits Kizaru and it's like, wait, on, but and then the thing is, this could make sense if it was Katakuri's uh like future sight kind of, kind of thing, right? Where like he morphs outside of, but that's not what's happening here. Luffy clears all of these clones and he's like, huh? What happened to them? <laughs> and then he just realizes the real Kizaru isn't even there. So then it's like, okay, these aren't really Kizaru. But then why are they why are they acting like this? You know what I mean? Like it, it, it's so I feel like next chapter, there's two, like three ways where it's like it's uh, one on one with Luffy, like you were saying earlier. Maybe it's a Vega Punk thing um, or maybe maybe um, this kind of this kind of fighting continues to happen, given how their fight ended with Luffy's glowing. Oda's doing an awesome thing of depicting Kizaru as a way different fighter than Kaido. Yeah. Kaido is a psych whatever this is i'm gonna run head first I'm into it but like kaido's really headstrong and that's why when people say oh you think you know kizaru can beat kaido you think kizaru can beat big mom it's like it's fights are never that straightforward with luffy it is with luffy yeah. he just goes around he punches people and then you know he, he ends up winning in the end but for any other fighter in one piece they play very differently like caribou for example caribou's a logia and instead of utilizing his logia powers he just brings out machine guns <laughs> Kizaru is very strong. I, you know, I'm gonna say Kizaru is he's very muscular underneath that suit, but he doesn't fight with fists. He fights with swords. He fights with little beams. He has clones. Like they're all so different, and that's why I think answering who would win in a fight between like Kizaru, Kaido, and who's who's giving Luffy a harder time. That's so it's it's abstract in a way, because like the the challenge that Kizaru is giving Luffy isn't the same challenge that kaido gave luffy right they're just that different right. yeah yeah uh it, it's just kind of like and that you know what like i think it's important too to say that you like that's why open. one piece is really cool that like it's such a small thing but like even the way this fight goes down right like like he gets thrown not to walk it back too far but he gets thrown by a god essentially because apparently he's been debriefed he doesn't know and that's something that like i really want to understand because he he's like this is the rumored and then he i don't think i don't remember him finishing the sentence but do they know the full extent of his abilities I or feel like does more or less does thanks to luchi's report and probably saint saturn like he, he probably doesn't know like 100 percent what luffy can do but I feel right. like he, he but, has he has the gist of it though, but and that's where the it's interesting because I I like the way Oda's doing this where uh when Kaido was confronted with it we get the dialogue of like okay so he could do this he could do this he could do this what is this why is this what is this you know what I mean those first few chapters weren't supposed to be like super fight focused like the part where he's like jump roping him it's like this is what it's capable of and this is how a like not a normal per like a, a competent fighter is receptive of this ability and now we're getting a similar thing here where it's like like he's just like okay this is weird um i i don't really have the time for this so he gets thrown he clones back and then he doesn't even go for him like that's well, well kaido wouldn't have done that kaido would have ran back and beat yeah, luffy's ass Ka kaido would have wanted like revenge he's like oh time to fight 
Kizaru's yeah. not like that. He's like, oh, dude, he's... I got a mission, bro. Yeah, I, he's I gotta like, get out of here. You monkey, you you think you could just throw me off? Of, you think you could just disrespect me like that and get away with it? And it's like, wait, wait, Kaido, you're supposed to you're supposed to land Onigashima on on Flower Capital. That that was the plan. That was the plan, Kaido. And he's like, no, I'm busy getting drunk and beating this the kid's ass. And I'm like, wait, 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 Kaido, I think you forgot the the thing. And so, but but that's where Kizaru is really cool too, where he's just like he he's very very mission oriented he, he a little we, we talked about we don't have to get into it here where he's just like he apparently he's been there in the labo phase in the thing and he's just like huh vegapunk's not here here let me just choke cold this guy with the big nose real yeah quick. Like, that's pretty funny <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that but one last thing i, I want to give my opinion on kizaru's clones real quick i gotta drop my mm-hmm. tea not really tea it's okay. just like i i just do think that these clones i don't believe they are fully sentient I feel like they yeah. are just light beams sent on a, a direct order to hit Luffy. And that's why they're moving in that straight line. They don't really have like that thought process in them. And mm-hmm. I feel like they can explode. And I I see that the armament hockey is going through them. And I don't believe that would hurt Kizaru because it's he's it's like he's like expelling it out of his body. It's it's like um it's like Luffy, for example, in a weird way. Like if Luffy had fire and he hits you with fire, if you hit the fire, it's not gonna hurt Luffy. That's a really bad way mm. to put it because he's he's not a Logia, but it's like Caribou. Right. If Caribou expels mud on the floor, you hit the mud, it's not gonna hurt Caribou because it's not technically his 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 right. OG body. So that's why right. I think that these clones don't and- really matter. But also that's why I think the clones are great. Because uh, you know, we talked about Kaido and Big Mom and how it, this would be really helpful in that fight because he can spread out his forces. Even though they get destroyed in one hit. They are still a pretty good distraction. They can still do damage. Like I think one of the clones actually nicked Luffy and drew blood. I, so that, that that's pretty that dang impressive for a clone. And this isn't just anybody they got a nick on. This is this is Luffy, man. Luchi didn't even land a hit on him, right? Like mm-hmm. Luch, Luchi couldn't even touch Gear Fifth Luffy. And you're telling me a clone that has no emotion, no sentience, and dies in one hit was able to do that? That's pretty impressive. It's yeah, not bad. yeah. These are. Kizaru, like he, I think he showed out to be like a one man army, you know, in a yeah, lot of ways. Like this, definitely this one guy man is, army. this guy is not like this. There's a reason why Oda could not give us him. <laughs> he gave us Kuzan. Kuzan's hella powerful, sure. <laughs> so is a Kainu, but this, this is kind of ridiculous. And and uh, I, your point about like Caribou expelling the mud, right? The difference that uh i think caribou would be a good example to play this out right if caribou is expelling the mud right if you hit the mud doesn't hurt him right but let's say he was um um taking in the mermaids like he was like he's he's actively sucking in the mermaids and then you hit that with armor mahaki that should hurt him i don't think it would or if he is control, if he's controlling, like if if like the mud is expelled, right, and he's controlling like a part of it, that should hurt him. That's how I see it because it's like that would be an extension of his body. Mm. It's different if like magma is on the ground, right? Like if you hit Hellhound, that's not gonna hurt a Kainu. But if a Kainu was somehow like controlling that dog, if a Kainu like it, you you brought up a thing um in the live in the live reaction, which was like um which we figured out wasn't the case but like um it was like the mirror ability but like if kizaru is able to for example swap between the clones right right like if he had three clones and then you hit one and then he's able to bounce to another one right that that would be a crazy hard ability to to deal with because then you'd have to hit all of them at the same time in order to hit him properly right because otherwise he could just swap he could just swap here and there whatever right but if if it's a scenario where all of them have a like he is able to control all of them that's a different thing and some people are saying that and that's where it, it gets confusing I, okay. because I, I, I see where you're coming I, from yeah and that's where like th- again here's another you brought up the nick right so kizaru hits him with a light sword it nicks him kizaru hits him with a laser beam he glows so we have to figure out we did that's the whole point of this it's like how that's light and that's light <laughs> what's the difference between Piercing these lights damage versus light beam sunbeam damage but also is, I, I see is what the you mean the li- okay yeah, yeah what uh, i see uh, sorry, sorry to cut you off there uh i see no, what no, you no. mean with like extensions 
should be able to be hurt. I don't agree with that notion, which is why I, I think we're, we're we're seeing different angles at this. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. I believe that whenever you hit a Logit, it has to be their their base body. It extensions don't count, in my opinion. And we have we don't have anything thus far in the story to say that extensions do count. At least not yet. I, like, which is why I think this fight is important because, like you said, we are getting those distinctions now. Yeah, the, and the only the, the only uh, canon example that like it would make sense to make this distinction on um, that like Zoro uh, made it was that Pika was not a Logia. He was a Paramecia stone person, right? You had to hit his main body because he's a Paramecia. Yeah. Um, versus, right? Like if if we're talking about uh, like Katakuri would be another one people bring up, but Katakuri is also a Paramecia. The thing is, if a Logia is doing that, then that's different. And that was the question mark that like Luffy had. He's like, wait, I'm hitting like, like how come this isn't like working? You know what I mean? Yeah. And then it's like, Oh, like I'm I'm a special paramecia and I'm using future sight or like some some nuance there about like the difference and uh yeah as far as as far as um you know I I guess the only example would be uh Anel sort of in his Raijin form which we don't have a full understanding of but that's also why Oda has been hiding the Logias things but that's that's where I think it's separate I don't think that the, like if the Logia um what's it called uh logia and paramecias then i don't think that they're going to operate like let's say for example hypothetically pika stone person in a paramecia you have to hit his main body right with uh with a logia i would imagine that that's the that's the drawback of being you, you're immensely powerful but you're also you're also at the risk of like if you are if you are um not careful with your ability you're opening up the risk of being hit by you know uh like a hockey attack right we're gonna get some nuance there i think we're gonna learn a little bit more it's gonna be exciting i'm just questioning when i just realized by the way nami was wanted the smoke she had lightning ready to hit and uh not no kazaru i just realized oh, yeah that. Nam, oh, nami had the lightning and brooke had the sword pointed at him i saw the sword i didn't see the lightning and you know what's funny man Brooke, it, it's kind of sad, but I, I wish Brooke had an armament hockey and just was able to hit Kizaru. You said that maybe, um, I, I believe you said something about like the soul, his soul abilities should be able to hit Kizaru. But, uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, 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 yeah like, yeah, yeah. The, I don't know, man. There's just something about Brooke not having armament hockey that's like, dang. I, I kind of wish all the Straw Hats did. I wish that, all the Straw Hats another... armament hockey. Or even you like know, that's basic armament, angle. basic observation. I feel like that'd be just nice. A lot of times in the series, we get something crazy. As an example, like an animal that talks, right? Like there's Chopper, there's Minx. Then there's just like animals, like sea kings that like can evoke a, like sound. And then there's Papagoo. And then like, you know, there's like four or five different ways to get to the same thing. And you could do that for almost any concept oda has brought up we're probably gonna see other ways to to hit uh, interact and to yeah. get armament hockey like a faux armament hockey yeah i mean photonic gloves to touch light sea stone to people thought uh, rayleigh's uh, sandals were sea stone right because that was another way then you have hockey and it's like there's three ways now um i wouldn't be surprised if there's a fourth way a fifth way and i think like the fourth way uh, Brooke might have that fourth way. I think the spiritual thing, that is something that is tied to hockey. Like Rayleigh in his introduction said, this is spiritual power. I, I think there's going to be other ways that we're going to see um, things being affected for sure. For sure. And Especially like natural, in this arc. Natural things too. Like uh, Luffy and yeah. the water against Crocodile and the rubber against Anel. Like yeah, honestly, yeah. if Blackbeard were to show up here, I think Blackbeard has an advantage over Kizaru. He should. Yeah. Darkness to a certain over, extent. Darkness is always going to be stronger than light. Yeah. To It's like, the thing is, it's like, uh, bringing Blackbeard here, in my opinion, would then, then I, w I would feel way more confident in being like, oh, Oda just wants to teach us how this all the works because there, there's no, <laughs> there's no shot we would get a meaningful fight out of two Yonkos and an Admiral here at the beginning of the last saga. Um, Instead of it being like, hey, 
like this is a taste of shanks this is a taste of garp this is a taste of kobe this is a taste of what's to come and this is uh, how powers work now this is how you should this is something that Luffy's capable of. This is what Blackbeard's capable of, right? Um, and and the reason why I don't think Blackbeard's showing up is because Oda didn't even show us Blackbeard doing that with a uh, Law, um, or, oh, yeah. or or Boa. So if if he were to show up, I think oh, I think Blackbeard's powers would still be hidden. And that that's that's always going to be a rough one, right? Because it's it's a shonen, it's Oda's manga, it's One Piece. You can't take. In my opinion, you, you can't take power scaling in One Piece too seriously. I mean, yeah, like if you open, look at the very beginning of the chapter, it's like, Kazaro got thrown light speed off the island. Why didn't Luffy just Bajran gun him? If he really wanted to be serious, why not Bajran gun him, right? Like, why not throw him off and then Bajran gun Kizaru him Because Kizaru would flying? dodge that Bajran gun. Kizaru would not take that head on. <laughs> like at the end of the day it's like there's so many ways you could say like luffy could be more serious here and then like you could say that about kazaro kazaro literally got thrown and it had his arms folded the entire time like as he's flying so and then um, not to mention kizaru isn't even focused on luffy he just he starts choking out usopp which i just gotta say man wait till elbaf it's gonna be great yeah after elbaf usopp's we're... gonna be holding kizaru by the throat yeah yeah the, you know man wait till Here's, I don't actually he, okay, believe that, okay. by the way. There's, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I don't want somebody to say, oh, it's like, it's, it's, I was going to think Usopp's going to get on powerful. The side no. vision. Oh, on, actually, the no, side the side vision. Let me, let me chug this, uh, this, uh, this sake real quick. And then just let me, hey, let me tell let you. Me tell let you. me tell you about the golden <laughs> days. <laughs> um, let, let me Usopp tell you. Usopp will never be strong. Uh, hey, hey, he, he was this, built to be the weakest straw hat. Even after Elbath. I think all of Usopp's power-ups will be mental power-ups. I'm going to tell you the He'll side. He'll have a couple of physical ones, but I, I think at the end of the day, even after Elbaf, he might still be being choked out like this. Like, it's... it's uh, no, that's just here, it here's is. the thing. This is his... This is his uh, I think he, all, he, he typically is in this scenario where, like, um, where... Okay, so th this is the side. This is a side take. Well, uh, I, I can't reenact you as well as you, but... um. Wait till Usopp learns uh, the patented black nose Shigan oh from Kaku. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the black nose <laughs> Usopp. Kizaru has him in the chokehold, and then Usopp's just like. <laughs> just Actually, I don't step. know, man. Like, now that I think about it, Usopp's nose is like the weakest part of his body. Because <laughs> no, it, gets, it gets broken a lot. Over. So, and if it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger. And so it's been strengthened by Uta, by, by, did Kaido hit him? Like, I don't even know at this point. Everybody's got a swing at his nose and broken it. <laughs> but it's for the foreshadowing that is. Even Mr. Four broke Black that nose, nose too. <laughs> Mr. Four broke no, that Mr. nose Four. with the baseball bat. Oh, God. It wasn't like the, like, oh, no, Usopp had the 10 ton hammer. But like, didn't he have like, didn't the guy said, like, this is the power of a ton behind it or something and that's why yeah. Usopp was like you have one ton I have ten yeah and it's like damn Mr. Four yeah. hit him with the one ton tam uh, one ton hammer I was about to say one Yo, ton I'm hammer kind of rhymed I like it low key oh <gasps> wait no no you know what's actually good f not okay not good foreshadowing not good foreshadowing just Oda foreshadowing good Oda foreshadowing what, what, would, what would it be is, hit me with do it do you remember who Usopp's uh main antagonist was in any's lobby at any's lobby who his main antagonist was yeah like who he fought <laughs> uh so he fought spandom he fought kaku and jabra uh, how did he fight kaku oh are you saying that he's just <laughs> gonna be used as a sword do you think somebody's gonna like pick up usopp and just use his nose as like a, a little nail and hammer no nah, i think kaku and usopp are gonna have a nose battle oh my gosh <laughs> <laughs> actually kaku uh oda in an sbs actually <laughs> measured their noses kaku has a longer nose uh, by a little bit yeah right? by a little just, bit yeah yeah just uh, just a little i saw that that's, sbs that, that was the that, most schnauzer is kind of crazy you know it's interesting now that we're talking about sbs oda is such an unhinged monster in the sbs's <laughs> that i'm actually he surprised is. that he creates a very canceled? tame manga <laughs> like, yeah. like like nothing nothing egregious ever happens in these chapters right 
Yeah, you, but here's the thing too. He slaps back at all these unhinged comments, but, but the in thing a is joking like, way though. No, but here's the thing too. He he also like d- differentiates his comedy of it and their comedy of it. He's almost like when I do it, it's funny. Yeah, he's grandstanding. I, when you do it on his own, it's a little in creepy. his own territory. What is he doing here? Yeah. Yeah, he's a like, like for example, he like uh, one of the people is infatuated with Nami and Robin, and even asks him the question. Right, my man has a naked Robin statue in his bathtub, and then he he has the audacity to, to meme on this guy, and it's like, but the thing is, the difference is Loki. Well, like Oda made this character. He he married and he has like the Robin thing, whatever. Right, he has one. We've seen the thing. It's fine. The, the other guy just has an entire like shrine, you know. So Oda's just like same energy, different output. You know, my man. Yeah. Like we're we're not the same. You think we're the same, but we're not the same. And that that's a that's a funny thing that Oda has done in the SBS because he's like someone comes up. Him with an unhinged question, and I'm reading. I'm like, oh, I wonder how Oda is gonna answer this question because he seems like he would entertain it, and then he doesn't, and he's just like, you're a weirdo. And I'm like, oh damn. Yeah, like, just one like- day you'll catch Otis like <laughs> describing Nami's breast shape, and then the next day he's like, guys, stop asking. Like that's gross. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, brother, <laughs> <laughs> this is a kid story. Oh, and then and then the uh, the PTA. He's had a, he's had an entire SBS with arc the PTA, where yeah. the PTA, where, where the parent teacher association is. Just yeah, like, Oda's fighting like the PTA and like everything in the S. <laughs> you know what? This is pretty much an entire segment right now in this video where we're just saying that you should go read the SBS because it's it's kind of entertaining. Especially his interviews. I've learned so much. He's an he's an he, not an asshat. He's so competitive. It's kind of crazy how you competitive gotta be, he is. You gotta be, you know? Like, if you're reading at the top, you gotta be competitive. In the middle of an interview, he stopped. Like, the person interviewing them just, like, couldn't ask questions. Because I was just like, what do you mean you're not competitive? What was your childhood like? You were always like this? What, like, you get he was participation asking, trophies, loser? Uh, you know, like, other people have manga. I have manga. You have manga. I never really looked at people as, like enemies and like oh does like enemies you don't have enemies i have so many enemies i thought you were my enemy he literally said that to the guy into his face he was like you thought i was an the enemy he's like yeah life for the competitive ones <laughs> And then he straight up to his face is like, yeah, for the longest time, I didn't read your manga because I wanted you to fail. And I'm like, oh, my God. No, ima- imagine Oda says, yeah, I looked at the scan sites for your manga. <laughs> <laughs> he, I didn't, he, he I didn't buy that. the Viz official for you. A lot of people actually missed our little collabs. Yeah. Yeah. I got a couple of messages and they're like, hey, where's the where's the 1092 collab with Par? And um, yeah. I just, I hit him with the cold water. I said that me and you got into a fight. <laughs> I, 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 That's also why the 50-50 yeah. was on hiatus. <laughs> uh, sorry, guys. I got into a fight with Par. Um, he was being really racist as per usual. Uh, he he loves <laughs> cultural appropriation. You could see it on his shirt today. I, yeah, I, think, like when I, I think that's Japanese for Chinese noodle soup. He's just going too crazy. <laughs> I, I, had to, yeah. I had to drop him like, like a hot tamale. When I differentiated uh, the Vietnamese squat versus the Korean squat. Yeah, versus I'm not a big fan of general- it. And, you know, going, you have to agree, though. going on to this chapter, too, man. Like, he's always popping that, that, that Vietnamese squat. Yeah. He yeah. went from choking out Usopp. And we don't even see, like, the transition, really. It's just choking out Usopp, Vietnamese squat, right? Yeah. Like, it's crazy how fast this guy is. He's, like, teleporting. And that Vietnamese squat is powerful, right? When Vietnamese mm-hmm. dads pose up like this, they have a cigarette in one hand, a beer in another, and then they're ready to whoop your butt later. Like, and that's what Kizan is doing. He shoots that laser beam, Luffy eats it, expels the light. We already talked about that. And uh, it's it's pretty impactful. And it's it's so curious to me because I still, maybe it's copium, but deep down in my heart, I still believe that Kizaru wouldn't kill Vegapunk. But, I mean, you know, he kind of shot like that laser beam, man. He was trying. So, I don't know. Like, well, what do you think about this? Do you think Kizaru would actually kill Vegapunk if given um, a clear chance to? It's it's so weird. Um, we didn't talk about this part of the chapter. Honestly, it's my le- not least favorite part of the chapter. You hate this part of the chapter. 
no, not this one. The part that we didn't talk about yet, but I want to talk about it. Um, with the Sentamaru, Bonnie, Kizaru security dome conversation. Mm. But like, despise not, it. Not this part. Not this one right here. You have a grudge um, against Oda for writing this. <laughs> no, not not this one. The second least like one is uh, Saturn sleeping. Maybe like, <laughs> man, my no, man. that's good. No, that, no that's, that's funny. I can't wait to get to that part. Yeah, oh. but like this, this one, it's kind of funny how we like ended up prioritizing which conversations, but uh, yeah, just we didn't even figure that Ooh. one out first. But uh, the the uh, it's like he, but the, you're right, right? Because he's school, he's just ch sitting, he has the same energy as Luffy, Jinbei, Zoro watching Aramaki just fight the scabbards. Like, it's like, hold on, hold on, hold on, guys, hold on, guys, this is a child with less than competent people who just got their country back short let them fight an admiral but like you saw Raizo and 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 shinobu get straight up get like not uh, guillotine is not the right word but like dead like they sucked. they sucked right like we're they gonna got, use they that word sucked. Like, we don't know what happened to Raizo because, or no, we do, but like Shinobu's fine because <laughs> that's just Oda. But like, Kizaru's <laughs> doing Oda. that. <laughs> this is Oda. But like, here, Kizaru is just same energy. He cares about Vegapunk, but it's his order, so he's going to do it. Is he actually going to do it? Well, then he shot this laser beam. Maybe he's trying to rip out a band. You know how like somebody doesn't want to do something, so they just like quickly. <laughs> Maybe that's what Kizaru's doing because he's just like, I gotta kill this man as soon as possible. Because even even like, last chapter, he said he said don't don't stall this out too long, Vegapunk, right? Yeah. Like, he said don't make this any harder than it has to be. But what if it's like, no, not what if it's like, but like, so do you think like he kills him? And obviously, like, I don't think this is how it's gonna go down. But is this the energy you expect it? Like he he kills him. He's like deeds done, and he like pours a drink out, and he's like, damn, it was a good time, good time, Vegapunk. I like, think so. It, I, yeah, like I he's like so relaxed in this moment. I, it's so I don't think he'd be relaxed the, afterwards, though. That's that's that goes back to the earlier conversation. Like, when does Kazaru become serious? Even in this moment, he's not serious. Like, he, or he is serious, but he like doesn't give off the energy of seriousness, which is like, what? <laughs> You're killing Vegapunk, and can you just do that so casually? So as far he's as masking like those him, emotions actually killing him i don't know i don't know um and here's the thing too is and, and I, I don't know if this is like any indication but is the fact that luffy didn't get hurt by it and it was just light apparently it was hot light maybe kizaru is trying to hit vegapunk but not harm him and he was just trying to like melt stuff or something or pop the bubble or take off the wheels like i don't know like me because that that was that's another reason why i'm looking so in depth into kizaru's powers because i think oda's showing us like these are the many ways you can use light you can damage you can cut you can make a sword you can make clones you can holograms is similar to ghosts you can also just make light I haven't shown you guys that one yet. Yeah, I've never shown you guys Kizaru oh, just shining maybe, a light on people. Maybe Kizaru was trying to recreate Rainbow Road for for his little Mario <gasps> part over there. Like like it was actually supposed to go underneath it to like guide it. You know, like a little a little beaming path. Something never along know. those lines, right? Because my point being is like you can, there's two ways you can code it. You could look at it as if Luffy just wanted to defend the thing, and now he interacts with light differently. That's plausible. We've seen times where Luffy gets burned by fire and then he just brushes it off with the Boro breath. We've seen him completely negate fire and lightning. We've seen him can wield it. So it's like, is it is it possible that Luffy gets burned by it? It, it can get cut by it. And then all of a sudden he's like, you know what? I'm just gonna glow. This time it's just glowing because whatever. That that seems like it makes sense. I don't I don't know. Do you know about Gear 5? I don't we barely it's, knew it's if this is hybrid toss. form. <laughs> it's literally a coin toss now. But I don't and know. And then man. you add you add on to maybe Kizaru wasn't trying to kill Vegapunk here and he was just trying to shine a like not shine a light, but like do something that we don't fully understand with this ability. Because it again, light is capable of so much. Oda hasn't shown us Kizaru just shining a light. <laughs> like that's literally like the power of like the right? Frankie like, nipple he, light beams. 
Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. So, I, but the, he, look, Luffy says, uh, my eyes, it's so hot. Why didn't he say that earlier when he got, like, cut? <laughs> Why didn't he say that? You know what I mean? Like, there's, uh, there's a few. because it's poking out of his eyes. Like, it's it's inside his body. You know, being hit from like... the back of your eyes is kind of crazy. Oh, oh, okay. I, I see what you're saying. I was going to say with the light thing, like, you could be cut and burned. You know, he didn't say it's like, oh, it burns. You know what I mean? Even though there was, like, a stint. Like, a, like a little singe. Like, I... Yeah, there was, like, those squiggly lines. I don't I, I don't even think, like, I've seen Oda use those squiggly lines all that often. Like, above that Gear 5 panel where he's, like, cut. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so it, 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 it it's interesting. What, to the point is, I don't even know what to expect of Kizaru next chapter. All I know is I'm enjoying... Kizaru is... um, And I said this in the live reaction. Kizaru is probably very quickly becoming my favorite admiral like very very quickly he's an easy guy to like i don't think anybody can wholeheartedly hate kizaru it's, it's just it's so hard it's just like when you look at every time he's on screen or on panel it's epic you know his introduction epic I'm not saying that about kuzan kuzan had epic things you know but but also on top of uh epicness and fighting and abilities like i'm not even talking about that i i like his character like his character seems kind of like i i like how nuanced it is all of them are but like it's so quick and interesting how in like one two chapters we flesh out enough where it's like i liked kuzan i liked fujitora um i liked akainu i like, like green bull green bull's interesting we haven't gotten enough to really really like uh hate or love him you know marriage was an interesting thing but like it's still we haven't gotten this this is the first time even for kizaru and it i, I really am liking like this like distinct feeling that oda created uh with kizaru it's 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 cool i like now, it now to it's bring fun. up the the hot the hot topic who do you think is gonna win <sighs> I'm still on the boat that, like, it's not dodging it, but we've said that the fight gets cut off. But I think we do leave with the understanding that, like, Kizaru mastered his power. Yeah. And Luffy didn't. You know what I mean? Like, Luffy very clearly has not, he doesn't, it's not that he's weak. By no means is Saba Odi Luffy weak. But if you gave him hockey, probably could handle himself a lot better. You know what I mean? Like, Smoker isn't a problem. Instantly not a problem for Luffy, right? Um... Same thing with Anel, technically, right? Um, and and I'm I I'm not saying that that's the parallel here, where like Luffy just learns one thing and automatically he's like even. It's different because Luffy's kind of already even, but I think the separation is Luffy's largely reacting to Kizaru, whereas Kizaru's just like he's guiding this fight so far. Yeah, he's guiding and the it's narrative beca because he has uh better mastery over his fruit and how to use it for what he wants yeah right i'm not saying like luffy doesn't have good mastery but like you can't tell me that like luffy's like this is the best way to beat luchi turn into pac-man no 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 like that's not that's not what's going through this head one but then two it's like uh, maybe Luffy has a better way to deal with Kizaru. He just doesn't know, you know? And maybe he learns after this fight. I don't think he learns it during this fight. I don't. It's not one of those fights where he learns through the battle and then eventually beats the Admiral. I don't think it's that. I, I think it's like like the first time so you Luffy think fought Kizaru's Crocodile. Win. I think Kizaru is going to get what he wants. If the fight doesn't get cut off. Um... No. Well, if the fight doesn't get cut off, then then my notion would be wrong, right? It yeah. would be a battle where Luffy eventually learns and then wins. Yeah. Oh, so you're it, saying like there's how... not enough time until Ve until yeah. Kizaru can get to Vegapunk. Yeah, I think right now Kizaru is going to get what he wants. It, every single time Kizaru is just like going around Luffy. He's like, okay, so he could do this. I'm going to do this. He can do this. I'm going to do this. Like every single time it's Kizaru doing something and then Luffy's reacting and then Kizaru's going to eventually just. And, and the thing is, Kizaru's getting closer and closer and closer and closer every single time. And remember, like Luffy clashed with him outside of Labo phase outside. He just entered since then. Kizaru has now made it to Vegapunk was 
almost inches away from blasting Vegapunk if that was a lethal blow, right? Luffy is has been in gear five, right? And Kizaru still managed to go around. I don't know if that's a he is stronger than Luffy. I, I I don't think we're getting that nuance. But what we are getting is that Kizaru is really good at his devil fruit. Really, really good. And and I'm glad that Oda's doing that. Because again, we're getting like so many examples. We're not of gonna what run into the Caesar thing again. Yeah, oh da 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 uh what was the analogy that you made last time? Like that's the the trick. It's like <laughs> the Winter stuff. Soldier uh, trigger. Yeah, 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 that's it. Ah, oh, you said Caesar's you're, name. You're, you're, you're like Bucky, and you just like it all flips. <laughs> yeah, like I have to like I have to like go to therapy now, like for years. Hail Hydra. <laughs> <laughs> Caesar. And the thing is, Caesar's so similar to to the Hydra. Yeah, he is. <laughs> His inspiration that it's like, damn it, I am Bucky. Like holy shit. Caesar He's, give me give me a second. Describe oh, what good. describe what we're talking about uh, next. And, and so the, um uh, uh Luffy uh, gear fit. Uh, <laughs> you're just letting me waddle in this shit. Come yeah, on. I, I gotta like bring out words Luchi to get Zorro. you off of this. Luchi's getting clapped by Zoro. Thoughts. Uh yeah, okay, so um Zoro and Luchi. I'm a big <laughs> fan of it. I, I love where the fight's going. This is exactly what I wanted from Luchi and Zoro. I don't know why, but Going into this chapter and like, you know, seeing people's reactions, some people are like, oh, like, look at this, I, I bet you hate this. And it's like, <laughs> brother, this is what I wanted. I, I, like, I got the W. Like, because my thing has my prerogative, as much as I love Luchi, Kizaru, Akainu, Ku, like, the Marines, whatever. As much as I love these guys, the nine vice admirals, as much as I love them. They don't have the same plot armor. They they aren't the main characters. They're not the straw hats. At the end of the day, if when it matters, Luffy, Zoro, like they're all going to win. That is undisputable. All I want is a decent fight. I want some good showings. I want them to be respected. And this chapter, Kizaru got it. Luchi got it. That That is all I want. And you know what? Zoro is even having to whip out some new things too. He's got these these flames on his blade. I mean, he started showing this during the King fight, but he has it here. He's got the hockey, the black lightning against Luchi. Luchi's awakened, so it's you know it's awesome for me because I love that awakening. It's like I think this is a win-win for Zoro and Luchi fans. It doesn't have to be either or. Right, I, I see this right. as as a great little clash. And you know what? This chapter, it's titled Luffy vs. Kizaru. I really hope the next one is Zoro vs. Luchi. I, I doubt that's going to happen because I, I feel like this fight isn't as important as the other ones simply because uh, it, it just feels like a stall fight. It's like how I see the Vice Admirals. This feels like a stall fight more than anything. I say mm. that for Luchi, or I say that for Luffy and Kizaru. Like, oh, they're both stalling for time, right? Like, Kizaru wants to stall Luffy so he can kill Vegapunk. Luffy wants to stall Kizaru so that they can get off the island and not kill Vegapunk. They, these right. all feel like stalls, but Zoro and Luchi, to me at least, feels like the most stall fight right now. Like, they, they're just you know, holding each other off until the captains or until something else happens on this island. You know, you you might not be wrong in um that idea because uh. People brought up prior, and it hasn't been incorrect. I mean, this doesn't even need to be a I, like. It doesn't even need to be like Oda's looking back at Sabaody at the end of the uh, at the end of the arc. People forget, and we talked about this earlier, is that it doesn't like like sometimes it 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 doesn't need to be like Oda had this ready to do this later on. It could just be like, oh, this is how Oda writes. This is how Oda thinks. So chapter five oh nine, Kizaru versus four captains chapter 510 straw hat pirates versus war machine that's the kuma axe carrying sentamaru 511 uh and then 512 zoro gone and then the next chapter is uh is uh beyond rescue right and so people i uh, people on twitter i think pr where was where i first saw it, people were saying like oh we're getting the thing it was like sentamaru kizaru uh something uh i forgot or and the kuma and then they were like, like so that. the next chapter is going to be luffy and then this chapter is Luffy, Lumbo. and so, and so the next it could be a Zoro thing. Um, given what what was the last one? It was a uh, Zoro's gone right after uh, axe carrying Sentamaru. So, you know, it's not a one to one, but like what I'm pointing out is like that's just like that's just indicative of like, hey, Oda's just like <laughs> he's just hey, 
What what should I name this chapter, guys? You know what kind of surprised me? What? We are getting really close to chapter one thousand one hundred. Yeah. Only a couple weeks away. People are expecting something huge to happen for that chapter because Oda does like to make you know specific numbers like, like kind of big. A Zoro chapter? ZKK finally fulfilled. <laughs> yeah, do you think Kaido <laughs> comes back one, and one? Zoro kills him? <gasps> Oh, oh, Z one one. That's Pin Zoro. So it's, it's Zoro's grandfather comes back as a holy knight. Crazy. <laughs> Actually, that wouldn't be too crazy. Yeah, wait. One one, one 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 one. We should look for a Zoro chapter. Like in all seriousness, I feel I feel yeah. like that could be in the cards because Zoro is the one 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 one. Yeah, the exactly. Pin Zoro, He's the Zoro, one like, one yeah. one. His his grandfather Pin Zoro is the one one. And then like, yeah. uh, and so like, maybe we just get the whole, maybe, maybe Oda is just like, he had, he knew that Zoro was going to have one eye since before One Piece. I need to get to 1,111 just so I can have ZKK, the, the prophetic theory that'll come out because oh, in the man. year 2022 uh, or 2021, there'll be a, a mob formulated <laughs> around <laughs> this thing. <laughs> Like he just he's that prophetical and he's just like you doing sound like that one of those like a TikTok time travelers. <laughs> oh, you ever God. see those where it's like they're like oh yes the April second two thousand and twenty three ten people will be abducted by aliens. It's always Show me like the that. Ones. Yeah, yeah. Show me so the behind the scenes with the Zoro brother. and Luchi fight, man. With the Zoro and Luchi fight, how do you feel about it? Do you do you like what it what happened here? Do you like the progression of this fight? It's moving kind of fast. I'm with you almost 100% on uh um uh, Do you think it's Kong Kurosaki? What that Lu uh, the Zoro has? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, duh. I mean, people are uh I I'll say it again and again. Uh, I have a video You're coming a out. You're braver man than me. Countering Morge, I'm confident about it and it's just it's just like if, if if you, I told him, I was like, yo, you didn't use the panels after the debut of the, this design that Oda created it would make sense that prior to it, it's not as consistent as afterwards. So I'd imagine afterwards, yeah, you could probably look at almost all those things and be like, huh, there's probably a reason why it's not just one. It's not just two. It's literally like five or six that I have that are literally like, that's a, that's conquers lightning right there. Like people on the panel are saying it. Um, and to the point uh, I brought up, it's like when Morge made that video, he didn't know that the lightning was a physical thing, like that it was destroying Onigashima's roof. And he only knew that because when the, he watched the anime episode and he saw that. And I was like, that's what I'm talking about. If Afterwards, if you look at it, that's Oda has been showing us every single thing. And, and this isn't a knock on Morge. It's the same thing with the Gear 5, with the Kizaru thing. It's it's more complex then we realize because Oda's not going to say it out loud. But going back to the Luchi thing, um, I agree with you 100% on how you receive this and, and why it's like, because the people are like, oh, Sai's going to be huffing and puffing when this chapter, when when we get him on this call, right? But it's like, the, the thing is, it's like, I've always said this, when you know when someone truly loves a character, they know uh they they can anticipate the bad they can anticipate the good they can anticipate uh uh when things won't go right for example like vinland uh he loves shanks shanks is one of his favorite characters i when my godfather theory godfather shanks theory came out he was th he was one of the first watchers and he loved it even though i said that uh shanks would be the the uh emperor of the black market trafficking children and he's like nah this this could be be it we don't know the full scope of it and you gotta wonder like why is oda doing that and like and and so you know he said that on uh i brought him on stream because he, he commented that and i i say that here too i i think you and i are talking about um very similarly with very different characters uh you said luchi i say bogard i think we had the same energy around them <clears throat> um i feel like you sounded very similar when you brought up and you were antagonizing you know what's your point part bogard. Uh, but as far as this fight goes right i think zoro i think the reality is they're they're even clash i think that's what it's gonna be at obviously they're both gonna show a certain level of bravado of like you know i'm the right hand like you're not that worthy of my talking. captain 
yeah we're gonna see that right like at the end of the day zoro did that with king too he's just like like uh before king um uh when zoro just got out of the cast because of the mink medicine he breaks out he's fighting it and then and then king's like kicks his sword or punches him he's like zoro's like you're not a swordsman and he's like why do i have to be a swordsman and then zoro's like well it doesn't fucking matter because i'm gonna bite your throat out with my bare teeth it's like damn what the hell (laughs) and like so zoro knew like the context like this would be a fight to the death but then later on when uh when king is like burning his crew alive zoro's just like damn i'm disappointed in you instead of fighting them how about you fight me what he said to luchi here is a little bit more excessive but um, I think Luchi, I think right now it makes sense to put Luchi at Zoro's tier. L- Luffy's fighting the Admiral to the extent where Luchi respects Kazaru so much that he's like, I'm, he gets the grand prize. I can maybe get the consolation. I couldn't act until Kizaru acted. I can't I be think, Luffy, but I can be yeah, Zoro. I think it's i'm not saying zoro had the same energy like obviously kizaru and luchi don't have that relationship but it would be like zoro would fight to fight to the death because he trusts in the power that luffy has it's like you translate that for luchi i think that's what we're getting at here um to the extent of like yeah luchi would be like an admiral's like right hand if if kizaru was a pirate i guess which is interesting for then kaku because kaku's just like in a ball somewhere (laughs) yeah he's just like he's just like chilling yeah yeah and luchi's just like i might have lost my best friend (laughs) and i might have lost a lot of my portrayal from any's lobby but i can still take zoro one of the most favorite the beloved characters in all of one piece (laughs) <laughs> like he went from skinning the entire crew alive to maybe I can take your head. <laughs> yeah, like this is a good consolation prize. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it'll be interesting. I think the fight will be off screen though. Like, yeah, it's not gonna. I don't. I don't think this like, is gonna even, be a fight to the end either. Even if the next chapter is Zoro versus Luchi, I think it's gonna be like this is the beginning. This is the end. Cool. You know. Yeah, kind of like this chapter how it's like Luffy versus Kizaru, but they're not like one to one fighting. You know, there, there's like no conclusive ending. Yeah, like if I were to That's name uh, this chapter, and this is a good segue, I would name it the most useless defense system in all of the world. Like this shit sucks ass, bro. <laughs> like I, I don't even care if like I'm being disingenuous or, or whatever. There's no reason for Bonnie to just like I liked my explanation and maybe that's co- like maybe that's just like the wrong way but people are saying center so people are saying that center maru took the blow uh, took is the is the reason why bonnie served. i have comments that said like oh uh, and i'm not saying anything the, the, the people who are going to watch this video uh, I, i'm being a little more rude than i would be if i were speaking to you i'm just it's just it's just that there and it's not just you i've heard other people say this in other streams they think that center maru took the hit for bonnie at the at the thing huh and so that's why bonnie has no damage i'm like wait but bonnie literally like frankie said bonnie hit the explosion that's what i'm saying wait bonnie hit the explosion wait 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 wait, wait, wait. so people are saying that sentomaru jumped up to the labo phase and and took the blow for bonnie i i'm i'm not even trying to that how that even i'm not uh, one that's like not possible I don't know. I have to, maybe I like I read those comments. It wasn't just one person. I think the first person was fine because like they didn't say it like that. They were like, "Oh, I think like Sentamaru uh, caught her and like so that yeah. she didn't hit the ground." That, that, that's that, that's fine. where I'm at. Okay, right. So and you see it. He caught her. She says, "Catch." Fine. She didn't hit the ground. Cool. But none of that explains the the defense field. Nobody and people are saying like, "But I don't think she actually hit it." No, she She's hit it. She's charred. Yeah, she hit it. She hit it. She, there's no way. And the thing is, that's how far people are going to try to ex- justify the ridiculousness of that. Is like, oh, maybe Sent Tomorrow became Superman. Like, I'm like, no, 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 no. Frankie said she hit it. We see she got exploded and then she's charred. She's falling. Then Sentamaru catches her. There's no world where Sentamaru was up there. Sentamaru is charred because Kizaru barbecued his ass before he left. And 
Sentamaru is a Giga Chad for what he did. Like, I don't know how he was just laying there. And he's like, he's like, is there a, is there a, a controversial little girl falling from the sky? Let me catch her. Like, <laughs> and then he does. Controversial little girl. <laughs> I love that. Uh, you know, and, and he does. And, and I'm still stuck at Vegapunk somehow saying, it's fine. Kizaru goes through it. He's light. <laughs> it's, it's. Gorosei Saturn was like, isn't that impenetrable force uh, force field made of light? You should be able to get through it, right? Kazaru and Kazaru's like, yeah, but even if I could, I gotta, you know, do this, right? And he goes, even if I could, I'm pretty sure that was the translation, right? Yeah. So he's not even like, he doesn't even like really know. He's just like, yeah, logically it makes sense. Luch Luffy goes through twice and said, I almost died. <laughs> he's gear five, by the way. I think I, thought... I think it's time to just come to terms with it, Par. I, I think you're in denial. And you don't want to accept the fact that Bonnie has one of the highest defenses in the entire series. The way she blocked off those laser beams. <laughs> impeccable. Actually, no. I mean, jokes aside, I mean, like, I, I to be fair, Bonnie was never gonna die by that. I'm surprised that Oda yeah, actually kicked I'm... her out. But yeah. with that being said, Bonnie. She doesn't look good, though. Like, if, if I were to put a health percentage for Bonnie right now, I'd say she's at, like, 20%. 20, 15% okay, so HP. Here's, you said, like, three very important notes. One, I'm surprised he had Bonnie get kicked in. The, he could have had this situation other ways. You know what I mean? Like, there's, there's other ways. I even explained one of them, which was... When it, we saw this force field explode twice, we know that Luffy goes in and out twice. So maybe the second explosion was Luffy, who we know could probably survive it since he did it. And he's gear five and he's a sun god, right? Like, but what is Bonnie? What is, where's her mythical zone that gives her more defense? Where, where's her mythical human rubbery? You are like, going to be rolling in your grave when you find when out that Bonnie she's... has a mythical zone. <laughs> maybe this is the, if this is, okay, see, the, hey, if it turns out, that she's a mythical Zoan, I think I'm not going to have the problem anymore. Everybody else is going to have, oh, everybody's a mythical Zoan now. Like, you know what I mean? And then it, it, whatever, right? But then the other part of it is people are saying like, oh, she's Kuma's daughter. So like Kuma special is, race, is special extra body. durable. But like, we don't know like what the context of that. And it feels like it it could go that she was like an adopt, like he was an adoptive father, right? Um, And, and so like, Sure, we could just add Kuma's durability, but that still doesn't really change that. Like, this is 100% powered up. Uh, at least when Kaku got hit, it was 72, I think. That's what the chat told me. Uh, uh, power. And he's also a Zoan, but he also has an Awakening. So, like, and he's also a, a, a CP0 agent. And I'm not saying CP0 is stronger than the worst gen, but there's no world where we ever got, like, like oh bonnie's really really no, I'll say it. Like, CP's, some of cp0 is stronger than the worst gen you see you see uh you see drake oh my goodness <laughs> that guy got fingered in the throat yeah yeah it, let me tell you bonnie would and then never have run away from cp0 I'm, I'm gonna say cp0 has better durability like like then hawkins, some of the worst gen not not drake all, and course. hawkins melted by this defense field bonnie though nah nah bonnie's clearing this you know easily and hey 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 maybe there's a world where she evolved herself into the 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 bonnie that survives the light but she, we, we didn't maybe see that's that. a, she hey she was that. here 20 years ago maybe she used to she burn herself casually. with lasers she was that person she built up yeah. that 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 defense you look at Bonnie's stats, yeah. her her HP, her attack, her her defense, everything <laughs> this, is low, but her her elemental resistance towards light, oh my goodness, it's at 99. This is you becoming an know. RPG. Yeah, it's like an it's RPG. Just, it's like D&D &D right now. Like, yeah, she, she's she's killing it over here. You, like you just it. see like an you see like a uh, the I forget what it's called where it's like someone has like the eye to see everyone's stats or whatever and then they just look at a random NPC and there's like F tier everything but then randomly they're like S triple plus S plus, tier yeah. at at flying and it's like what this guy could be my pilot and it's like it's some cracked shit like that and you're like how did you learn to fly oh my dad threw me off the island for my entire childhood so naturally I learned how to fly and it's like that's what Bonnie it's did like, Luffy, like where oh. it's like why is Luffy so strong in chapter one it's like well garp used to throw him in the jungle and you know he used to yeah. fight a bunch of animals it, it's yeah, kind of so like that maybe, maybe bonnie has that backstory we never know and kuma was that kind of a yeah father, he, right? he just he just threw her to lasers 
<laughs> just like body this the world is scary but to be you fair, can't even make it off this, this island <laughs> this dome you know to, to 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 defend the dome for a minute you know inanimate objects my favorite yeah. ones to defend everybody else would die like like the marine fodder they hit that they die like only named characters in anime would survive that <laughs> it is in, it is an impenetrable dome to anyone else but bonnie usopp you know luffy like they, they can survive this i'm that's where i'm at usopp you think Us brother oh, yeah, right, brother there's like, no way usopp would die like usopp has no, no, but crazy plot armor Here's the problem. You just don't need to put the characters in a situation to de devalue something you built up that wasn't necessary. No, but it's valued. Bonnie's Bonnie scuffed, bro. Bon Bonnie, like I she said. She could have got scuffed any other way. <laughs> like, hey, Bon Bonnie's at like 15 HP. What do you want from her? She's just a little yeah. girl par. Chill. She could have gone 15 HP from falling off the island and hitting the ground. Like, no, just but that would have Sentomaru. killed her. We need sent tomorrow to do oh, that. Oh, the, the falling from the sky kills her, but not the death par, laser par, beams par, that par, the par. smartest man in the world screen. <laughs> by uh, mind you, created from the inspiration from the admiral, the also other strongest entities in the verse. Like, I can't believe like, you. Like, I, I just, as, you know, all these people are like, oh, Kizaru's getting washed, Luffy's getting washed, Zoro, Luchi's ass, like, all this stuff. I'm like, my God, guys, like, Vegapunk is garbage, like, actually trash. Every, <sighs> he, like, we talk about how Kaido's words are fraudulent. My man, Vegapunk is not Batman. He's not Lelouch. He's not half of his satellites are stupid like literally i can say that by now like york is literally a dumbass like it's an insult to say that she's a vega punk she sat there thinking three vega punks couldn't crack her vega punk password it's like you're just dumb uh, like <laughs> that password was so lame that we didn't even get to see what the answer was they yeah, they they yeah. Uh, they, they kind of off screen that password they're like <laughs> <laughs> we got it like <laughs> And they didn't even tell us the thing. See, the thing is, people crazy. are going to be like, damn, Parse is being so harsh. Mind you, I knew that this was going to happen. At the beginning of Egghead, I said one of the hardest characters to ever write in fiction is the un undisputable smartest person. Like Caesar. That is so hard to... Yeah. Uh, yeah! Now I know why Caesar's a dumbass, because Vegapunk isn't any better. Like, the man is a... He's smart, yeah, but, he, but like... He's he's book smart. He's not he's not street smart. Yeah, like, it's not even, like, street smarts either. It's, it's like... It, it's... He tested on Kaido to the point that he got his devil fruit. He didn't copy Kaido's body. He copied Kuma's body because Kuma is just so sexy and hot and so strong, apparently. Kaido, no. Like, my man, tell me, would you Kaido's rather like have one Kaido of the, pass? Kaido's like one of the only Oni in the world. I'd just test on them both. Yeah, but w w tell me, K Kaido pacifistas? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Obviously, we're going to learn that Kuma, like, you know, it, there, there's a whole, like, order, whatever, 66, and the, the whole plan why Kuma is chosen, right? But I would still get some Kaido ones. What do you mean? Like a Kaido Seraphim? That's kind or of insane. Or maybe like a, Kaidos are the Mark Threes. Well, so you can have the best yeah. of both worlds. Yeah, like something like that. But no, like it's just it's just like small things. And it, obviously it's like it, it it's not the focus. But those are reasons why I knew that I would be disappointed in it by now. But I didn't think I'd be so disappointed that like not even late. We can't even trust in laser beams being like, like being lethal to, to the point where you're like, you're saying again, like Usopp name character. love him. I love Usopp. Uh, you can hear, hear how much love I have for him, but like, you don't need to write when he saw in. Usopp was being choked out. I had to call, you I had to call Parr's wife to make sure he was okay. You don't need to write in a situation where Usopp has to confront a laser beam system that's supposed to be impenetrable. Because now it's like not only the Gorsei, not only the, the Vegapunk, not only the Straw Hats, they all treated this, this defense field as if it was impenetrable. To the point we did, we spent like 15, 20 chapters like, who's the traitor? No one can get in and out. 
they could just go in all it takes is a quick like microwave that's all it is you know what i mean not even like uh, there's i know girls that get uh, hotter suntans apparently than than this like it does more damage to them than it did to bonnie because bonnie's out here running running like laps around all of these marines to the point they think that she's the boogeyman <laughs> they don't even know where she is you're telling me she's so damaged she fell from the goddamn sky after getting hit with the craziest laser beam that the the marines are like wait she has to be nearby she just touched him and him and him and him we don't even know where she's at man these guys are just useless like and i get it they're fodder but like she's that capable right now that she can invade an entire army of marines that are invading this thing to kill vegapunk okay, and the straw hats but they can't stop bonnie here they're not just <laughs> any marines these are marines that came from ships of all sizes who's to say they didn't come from the short ship the small boat you know maybe you're not looking I at the at, 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 at the, the battleship marines was... you are looking at the marines that came in on a little a little dinghy bro a life raft i i want to mark down the day when i had Sai counter his own marine glazing agenda for a moment even i thought i was genuinely thinking that you were gonna say like you're being disingenuous, part. Not only are these Marines, and 30, these are them. Navy HQ Marines. <laughs> Navy HQ, tier three. If you look closely at that guy's shoulder, you see a couple of stripes on there. These are veterans. Like, these are guys from Whitebeard's was... era. I was confused. I was like, oh, wait, Sai's going to help me out in this moment? I, I guess I was being disingenuous, but then you hit me with the reverse Uno real quick and like, no, these guys are ass cheeks. That ship, man, it's lucky they even made it here. <laughs> like, <I> was... <laughs> man, a simple storm would have blew them to the wrong island. They would have ended up at Elbath. Yeah, and it's 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 parts of these. Uh, uh, um, Where are the vice this admirals, bro? Doll and Chin guy, they were actually like <laughs> off the coast. Doll was on the island, actually. Where are they? <laughs> they just letting Bonnie run run through yeah, their crazy, entire man. thing. She's like she's into like a, a senior citizens' home over here. <laughs> At this point, she's like Cavendish's Hakuba, which is like a legendary the weasel of the wind. Like they were like, oh, one moment he's there and he's gone. And then they're like, it's like they're acting like Bonnie's the, a ninja. Was, he, but Cavendish was doing that at the at nighttime <laughs> to civilians. <laughs> she's doing it to the people. Oh my god! I thought we left Wano. Is that Ushimitsu Kozo? <laughs> <laughs> And, and it's like i'm saying all this stuff but obviously when you read the story it's like oda's not putting in a chapter where luffy and kizaru are fighting it, this stuff isn't going to get fleshed out but the only part i don't even care about the marine stuff i don't care about the sent tomorrow stuff F you know make it inconsistent make it just not inconsistent but make it geared towards let's get through this part fast so we can get to the important parts i understand that the one part I just can't is the defense system because it just wasn't necessary nah, to man, do that. Here, Par, I, I one million percent see what you're getting at, and I agree with you. In yeah. in real life, I would agree with you, but this is anime logic, <laughs> and you know, it's it's one of those switches I turn off when I read One Piece or any other manga, to be honest. And it, you know, I don't think it's that big of a deal that Bonnie survived this with a couple of boo boos. A couple of boo boos, a couple of what? Did I, I still didn't look at what happened to Kaku. Wasn't Kaku just like laying there for like a good? No, week? no. Kaku, Kaku <laughs> came back with some some bruises, and he was like, "Sussy, why the hell didn't you tell me that sooner?" No one and and no one caught him. So they just like watched. They just watched him fall. <laughs> Is that what happened? Do you in think reality? Sentomaru like, was there to catch Kaku? <laughs> That's what saved him. The Kaku was like I would have died if Sentomaru didn't catch me. <laughs> like the funnier part is there was plenty of people that could have and they just want, and it's like really far away too so it's like it's not even like like oh i'm sorry i didn't know that it was gonna happen like no stussy knew it was gonna happen luchi would like watched it happen it was like oh eh, he'll be fine that's <laughs> how it is man but yeah no and, I, I, you know, I i turn the brain off a little bit when it comes to things like this you know like it's it's no big deal it's just and, and the other part of it too that that flips because i agree with you i i i i am i know i'm being super harsh the other part of it that makes me even harsher 
is this isn't judge this isn't queen this isn't caesar no this is vega punk this is the man who studied all of these guys the admirals the highest power like i just i just want it to be like that i can trust what he says you know what i mean but now it's like nine six i don't know how many or which ones exactly it's been a minute since i like thought about it but it's like there's so many things now that it's just like yeah that's not true you know what i mean like you, now whenever he says something i'm gonna be like yeah, that that probably isn't even correct. So, I think the only Vegapunk that I really trust it was Shaka. Shaka was like the actual because he had that one air so far. of confidence to him. Yeah, and, and everything that he said, everything that he said so far has God's been legit. Like, because because Oda made him made it so that Shaka told us the Void Sentry stuff, all stuff that we can verify. And he hasn't. I, I mean, he probably said oh the impenetrable, but he I don't think he was glazing it up like like uh like the Stella was. So maybe maybe that's what it is. Stella's like super proud of it. Uh, and he's like, ah, oh, it's impenetrable. Well, no, no, no. But Stella is uh, he's a perfectionist, right? Like he considers <sighs> oh, the smallest don't, 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 thing stop, stop, a stop, failure. Stop, stop, stop. So this laser that. dome is perfect, Par. You need to dial it back, buddy. It was it was designed it was designed exactly how <laughs> it's performing it's everything it should do perfectly. It's Bonnie's impenetrable because you can't penetrate it; you can only explode it. But but here's the thing: what if what if he designed this dome to only let Bonnie survive it? Okay, I don't know where I was going with that. Okay, wait, yeah, wait, wait. Another like... thing that's people, you know, since we're bringing up Vegapunk's intelligence here, another hot debate is whether or not saint saturn has the highest authority truly or if vegapunk has a fail safe i'm on the boat that if if this was anything else it logically there would be a fail safe but i i just i don't feel it i, I don't feel the fail safe option coming in here uh because of the gore say like i feel like imagine if saturn comes out you know checked out of the hospital he gets up he, he stands up for once in his life he wakes up from his nap and then he's like hey pacifistas you're under my command and then vegapunk's just like reverse uno card i don't know like it would be cool for vegapunk but i, I feel like saturn would just look a little bit goofy right I, that's kind of where i'm at i know that's like a not not a strong argument against the fail safe but it would feel pointless to have saturn here with that authority if the authority doesn't mean anything maybe that's maybe that is the play though maybe saturn loses the authority because of the failsafe and then that's when he actually shows off and then he destroys all the pacifista i don't know but i mean wh yeah. wh where do you fall on this do you think there's a failsafe that vegapunk has in place for the pacifistas in the command hierarchy or do you think no saturn is going to be the top dog because i i kind of dial it back to like saturn and the gorosei funded vegapunk the, the whole reason why Vegapunk is able to buy all this is because the government funded him so that the government can have weapons. So it would yeah. make sense that Saturn has that hierarchy and they made sure that that is the one thing that is theirs at the end of the day. I don't know. It's, um, I don't know. It, it, there's a few uh, levels to it, right? Because one, yeah, like they funded it, but clearly Saturn doesn't give a shit about these things because all he wants is the power plant. He doesn't, he hasn't even mentioned the Seraphims, which is like, that's an interesting thing um, because you would imagine Maybe like- he didn't read the newspaper so, yet. Wait, what do you mean? Like he doesn't even know Seraphims exist. <laughs> God, <laughs> that'd be, that'd be wild. He didn't if, do like, this the week's crossword puzzle. <laughs> His money, if they were such uh, awful investors that they didn't have, they didn't, it, like, it's one thing that if you're, as an investor, you should invest in, in information gathering and also knowing that the person you're funding, it's their prerogative to, to not their prerogative, but it's, it's sometimes in their interest to hide things from you because some things are too scary. So you have to, you have to play both sides. And, and you know, obviously I think Oda knows all that stuff like he's he's been in the world i mean he's been dealing with netflix so so i'm sure he's been exposed to a lot of uh corporate stuff um but that being said and he's played the 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 apparently he's been doing really well on that on that front too um but when it comes to the the whole conversation i agree with you that based on the story and my rant on Vegapunk, it doesn't feel like the authority, like he programmed an authority ba back thing, uh, even though it would make so much sense to. There's, it, it makes no sense not to. But 
you're right because then it's like the gorose shows up and then like the one thing that he was here like to do or like has been said that he was going to do then is just countered immediately and the only way it would make sense is if vegapunk wasn't aware that the gorose is actually strong and then so then the gorose guys is like ah i should have figured you you'd program this in i don't even care for these things and then he just obliterates all of them right because yeah. he he all he cares about is that power plant all he cares about is york he doesn't give a sh- uh, flying like anything about these flying seraphim uh, uh or 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 the pacifistas so there is a world where he has it pulled over vegapunk is like ah I never trusted you, Celestial Dragon kind. I programmed a failsafe. And then he hits the button, and then all the pacifistas surround uh, the the Gorose. And then, like, Vegapunk's watching from a camera. And then and then the Gorose guy's just like, huh. Like, he sighs. He's just like, are you really? And then, and then we like, the camera just, like, shuts off, or it just, like, explodes, because that's how powerful Saint Saturn is. And, and then the, the next panel we get is there's not even, uh, like, the, the pacifists don't, don't even exist anymore. They're, like, gone. off. And there's the crater next to Saturn. And, and like, the planet is floating above Egghead. Like, some I'm just Planet Saturn is coming <laughs> to Earth. <laughs> like, is this they look, crazy? Oh, God, is that the rings of Saturn? <laughs> like obviously it could be that level it could be lower (laughs) and it could be that that he's really really strong and powerful and hey it could go that route um i prefer that line i prefer that line given what we were saying and how vegapunk's being portrayed though did he make a fail safe I, i don't know if it even feels like it i don't know and to the point is this is why i want to end the chapter on the saint saturn guy is he strong? Like, it, like I, think I, 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 I think he is. I think he's strong. He's just strong. taking a nap. The best I think he's characters strong. take naps before battles. And I I all, ha, always thought he was strong for the people who j- have never heard me talk about the Gorose before because there's a lot of new viewers. Um, but I think now the question is, is, are they the strongest? Or are they, like not like 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 hack strong you know what i mean like is is can, if kizaru wanted to could he just beat saturn right is it just because they're a hierarchy maintained or is saturn and the gorse do they also have a, a, a the ability to uh lay down the law if they are ever needed to but the point being is that they're so above everybody that when they uh, if they were ever to use their powers it would just be that destructive or that unfair or it's just a waste of their time. That's why they don't act, right? I I, I want to know. I do want to know. Uh, I, it, at this point, it feels like we are going to get something from the Gorse. It doesn't make sense because Vegapunk is now like the second time talking about like the in recent chapters. Like we have the highest hierarchy. Obviously, no one on this island can stop us once if we take control. And then Saint Saturn then is like, like rubbing his hands about side. He's like, "Ooh, it, yeah, it'd it be so here. dumb if he didn't do anything, right?" And apparently, you can just shout the orders. By the way, I just want to point that out to the pacifistas. You can't do this to Seraphim, but you can shout at the pacifistas, and they're like, "Oh, oh God!" And then they just listen because like Atlas isn't there, <laughs> and she's just giving an order from from uh fw- wherever that quick. Fw- like that's that's atlas i guess um she oh oh that's the tank right and she's just shouting and then they all look up and they hear her so technically saturn could just get up on the on the crow's nest and get to the closest ship hey pull pull up to the island let me let me give them a piece of my mind punk (laughs) yeah don't listen to the little girl in the tank. I'm the I'm the Gorose. and then and then (laughs) the Gorose. like he's just like and then the passive he's just like uh, I'm sorry. I'm gonna need to see uh, ID and verification, please. We can't just go off of voice. But apparently we are. You know, apparently we are gonna just. Cause can anyone just say this is an override command from Vegapunk? Maybe maybe they <laughs> like, put their voices in there. But it does make you wonder what happens if you cut off their tongue. Hey, yeah. You they, never know, hey, man. You never know. You maybe never know. that's what Saturn's power is. He takes away everyone's ability to speak. Oh, that'd be cool. You know, Law would be kind of broken here. Law with his uh. His silent oh, room. True. Yeah. You could true. give a command to the Seraphims and then just cut off all sound around them and then that's it. It's game. 
Yeah, that's why Law's dead. No, I'm <laughs> that's why Law got <laughs> written off. Yeah, bye bye, El Bozo. El like, Bozo. Just... <laughs> oh so, man, I want to. I want Oda so. to meme on some of these chapter titles, just like El Bozo is the chapter. You title. know, I like <laughs> Oda's chapter titles sometimes, but I will admit, I've been rereading Bleach, and I love, I love Kubo's chapter titles. What's an example? Do you have one? Yeah, I mean, they're just kind of like, a, you know, it does like blah, 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 one, two, three, four. Like he carries on. Like this would be, well, like Luffy versus Kizaru one. And then maybe next chapter would be like Luffy versus Kizaru two. Oh. But he usually brings in like a like movie title sometimes. Like I think the last two or three chapters of Bleach that were adapted were like March of the Zombies one, March of the Zombies two. And that's like the center focus. And JJK does the same thing too, where, um, where Gojo was fighting. And then it's like, oh, here's that battle one two three four until the end mm. it's it's kind of nice because i feel like for oda he's he's making his job hard I, I'm, I'm thinking for oda right now like making a thousand and almost 100 chapter titles all different that's a feat man and i'm sure like that's probably one of the reasons why oda's like i gotta end this soon like <laughs> i can't think of these <laughs> chapter titles anymore like it, no, might, it must think... be hard after a minute I think it is harder, but I also think Oda did that because there, like, for example, there is uh, two or three poems. Like, he wrote one of the chapter titles is he he made an original poem. It's just the title of the chapter. Yeah. Like the Japanese are just like, wait, is this like a, a the Japanese version of what a haiku is? He wrote that in the title, and the person he like dissected it, and Oda's like, wow, it's a great like he acknowledged and all this stuff, and like I think Oda has intentional titles yeah and then he has titles that are just like like there's no meaning for this one so luffy versus kizaru right yeah that's there, kind of how i feel about certain... this chapter so and that's you know I, and the reason why i think he has to do it that way is because if you were to just do luffy versus kizaru one two three four then it would be very apparent at which chapter titles are super super meaningful and which ones aren't so he has to kind of hide the needle in the haystack and uh, I, I'm, this chapter isn't the example of that, but like, like there are other ex, uh, chapter titles that would be like, this is probably just a random thing, but Oda's probably like, instead of having to just, you know, uh, default to like a, like an AI generated, like categorization of what this chapter would be in this context of a book, then uh, he he's kind of hiding the needle in the haystack. And I think he does like naming things. I think yeah. he likes that that fun part but like you're saying like some characters he names and it's just random right there's no meaning to some of the names um like like one of the characters for uh, i don't even know this is people say uh, we look too deep like in one piece there's this sbs and i'm like this you know what my, my uh, uh, conspiracy i'm peering in this uh <laughs> this the <laughs> <laughs> there's this SBS where you know my agenda where I'm saying like oh, the some Oda SBS is Oda procures because it's related to the chapter he wants to sh tell us something prior to it happening yeah something like that right um, and then there's other chapters that he's just memeing there's like the filler the boob tits ball gag PTA jokes ones the ones about other the t-shirt it's not t-shirts ones but the other ones he's put puzzles in the in the SBS's too um, but there there was an sbs where this guy was just like in the 77th br uh, branch of the marines there's this guy named purin purin is that a reference to purin purin a 60s uh, a puppet show that only aired in japan and like i don't even think that person was from japan like that and, and oda's like wow that that's a little crazy that you know about that and then the guy's just like do you love that show and oda's like no i never watched it but i have an older sister and she watched it and so uh when i like it basically i'm filling in this part but i imagine like when he wake woke up in the morning went to school he'd see his sister watching that show and he'd be like what the hell and so he made the hair design the main character that person and it's like that doesn't have meaning it's not like the 77th marine branch person and the thing is he acknowledged he's like i didn't meaningfully do that that was just a random thing i guess i it was like subliminally entered into his consciousness that like oh shit that was from that puppet show that my sister watched when she was a kid and that's just how it and is like, man like you got yeah, a thousand one hundred yeah. chapters like we look deep into things like you said but and sometimes oda means for it to be foreshadowing obvious not obvious but but that one's not yeah that was <laughs> not several sometimes aren't. there are just genuine coincidences that line up with reality because he has a thousand and one hundred chapters for sure for sure
Yeah, like like the, an example of us looking too deep, and I don't think it's unjustified, but we know that we're crackheads for it. Is the recycle Kurt agenda? The that is where man, we. Man, he gave he gave that bad boy a freaking whole panel. He gave him a yeah. panel, a little a little text box saying who he is. That recycle Kurt, man. I you know I didn't forget about you, buddy. <laughs> He's gonna, he's I just, gonna come I'll to play. Put, I believe it. I'm putting on display how we said that there's some crazies it's out like there. The, that it's think like the photonic <laughs> gloves, you know. You mention it once, it's got, it's in the back of my head. Like, I'm not gonna bring it up every single day, but it lives there, you know. Recycle curve, photon gloves. It might come into play one day. I don't. Know, I would man. argue that the photonic gloves are more important than the. I don't know. Gloves. Like that's all. Like, <laughs> see, okay. Here's the thing. The photonic gloves. You can, you can just touch Kizaru from you Jimmy can touch Neutron. Kizaru with the photonic gloves, but genuinely, like if you have hockey, <laughs> I would I would like to imagine hockey is better than the gloves, unless you're Brooke, who doesn't have hockey, Frankie, who doesn't have maybe it's good there, Robin, where she has her crazy monos and it just starts grabbing Kizaru with a photonic glove all over, just start yeah. groping him, molesting him, maybe that's good, oh but the recycle cur though, I don't know, I see potential. I see potential in that damn dog. See, and, and this is, uh, let me hit you guys uh, with the sane take here, right? This is the most sane take. Like, if you didn't want to use the This is the most sane take. For... Luffy's going to lose and he's going to have Gear 6 come out. No, no, no. So, it, the, <laughs> the most sane take In the we scope have. of the photonic gloves and the recycle curve, this is what a sane take would be if you didn't want to theorize about the photonic glove. And I, I'm saying that because I think it's fine for people to, to theorize about the photonic gloves and what they mean, right? Are they going to be useful in the story? Sure, you can come up with a bunch of ideas. The baseline understanding would be that... Oda demonstrated that you can touch light and it's scientifically possible. Oda is showing that it is possible without hockey and it's not so that these gloves are going to play a role later on in the story. He's just showing that in his world, there is science, scientific reasoning that allows you to touch light. We don't have that. We can't just go to a flashlight and be like, huh? This is sick. We can't do that. We, we can't do that with holograms. We can't do that. So he's trying to show us that. And that would be what you would say for that. And the sa similar thing with the Recycle Kerr, it would just be like, oh, like Oda was playing a lot with references. Like maybe he was playing off on like some reference to the Jetsons and, and he's playing off on like, uh, like an animal. A mechanical animal is a direct reference to Karakuri Island, for example. So this is the development towards that. And here we have it, right? I'm, but I'm with you on the recycle cur theory side because he didn't give a panel of, of text. We don't get that. We we only got that for Luffy. Luffy, the Straw Hat Pirates are deleted off the from the series. Like we, that's the kind of shit you get. The a shocking <laughs> event me, will um, occur on Egghead Island. Yeah, like that. Yeah, but that like, little dog got that whole treatment, or not the whole treatment. Yeah. But he 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 got introduced like that. And there's still big mom pirates that don't even have that. Like, I don't know, man. Snack didn't yeah. even get that. And, and and I'm saying that because like it's not like it's not like those th those realities are lost on us. It's just that we take that into consideration, and that recycle cur one is an anomaly. Like you can't, no one can tell us that that's not an anomaly. Like, m like m Tama's dog. The co did that thing get introduced? Komaino, that no. thing carried. And, and he here's that, here's another thing too to, to back up did why we're lot. not crazy. <laughs> That recycle cur got a little introduction panel box, whatever, and the recycle cur didn't even interact with any of the straw hats. Why? It Why? was Dude, a that's background an character who was just it happened to be an eye shot that got a box. Like, I don't know, man. Like that that's uh, kind of interesting. I'm not gonna lie. And, and you, uh, you know what? Let me tell you something Never else saw about again. introduction boxes. Until we introduction... leave Egg Island, it's I I I believe in that cur. Introduction boxes is how Randy Troy predicted that Sukiyaki was Hitetsu and that Tama was Kurazumi. He got both of those right from the that one singular introduction of Hitetsu being a doll maker and then Sukiyaki being a doll maker. That Oda did that through the the introduction box. So then why are we doing that with the recycle the curve when we know Oda who has literally no dialogue. <laughs> no dialogue. Who, who is the dog? Meanwhile, Koma know, Inu was literally the most pivotal animal besides 
Uh, no, honestly, Koba Inu might have been as pivotal as Chopper. You got in the, me. In, in, in you got me Gashima. feeling like a, a homeless guy on the side of the street telling people that the <laughs> yeah, like like the Armageddon's <laughs> coming. Cycle. Like guys, the <laughs> apocalypse hits tomorrow. Like you got me feeling like a, like a psychopath because I'm not gonna lie. Like I I, I am like. I, there's something about but this we know dang it. dog, we know it. and I guarantee you, Par, people are gonna go down there and they'd be like, "What? What, what are they talking? What dog?" Like people are gonna forget about it because it's such a small panel in this in this arc. It is, yeah, probably you the brought least it up to me. I didn't even notice in this it. arc because we had Shanks, Blackbeard, Photonic Gloves, a food machine, Bonnie, Kuma. Like so much is happening that that dog. It's like, why did he? Why did he get a full pool by himself? Like, he didn't talk to anybody. He can't talk to anybody. He was a background character, and for some reason, Oda decided to introduce him. I don't know. I, you know, like you got me feeling like a madman. But I am with you. This is the one theory that I am whole hog about. And if you don't know what our theory is, we we kind of cook this up together. You know, you put an Indian. And you put uh, Asian in a in, in a kitchen. God damn, we have some nasty fusion going on. And we came up with an idea that maybe Vega like Punk a restaurant. <laughs> maybe Vega Punk entire... dies, right? Yeah. Vega Punk dies. Kizaru completes his mission, but Vega Punk survives. And our our theory was that Vega Punk uploads his consciousness to a dog, which sounds bad. <laughs> <laughs> but it is kind of the perfect way to nerf the, the world's smartest human. Yeah, and the like the main detractor at the moment is that he's proving to me he's not. But like we still gotta put like is he? Are we removing him? Well, that theory removes him, but keeps him in like an Odo way, in my opinion. You know what yeah. I mean? Like. It's like, oh, how is Odin still alive? Well, he's somehow he's in Zoro's sword, I guess, and and Kaido has PTSD from that. Like he does weird shit like that all the time. Like, like, oh, Ryuma's been dead for four hundred years. No, actually, his shadow or his zombie corpse was taken from Wano. <laughs> like, like it's it's like Oda has these characters and keeps them and does things and all this stuff. I wouldn't be surprised if if like Vegapunk gets immortalized in this dog that's just like smarter than Frankie and everything. And that would be hilarious. Like my, my favorite part of that theory is the day that Neo Mads meets Vegapunk in that thing, and they're like, "Ha ha, we're so much better than you, you lame." This serves you right all those years bullying us for our stupidity, and then Vegapunk still is smarter than them in a dog and lobotomized because he doesn't have like the the egghead thing. Like he's still just better. I, yeah, it's there. And and or maybe I, that's I, how York survives. Maybe York one, does that. It could even be York. And the, the 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 foundation of it is on the, the still crackhead point that that narration Maybe box your, and this dog because are important. When the dog was introduced, it was it was a it's a recycler. It eats trash, and York is all about eating. And York wants to be a celestial dragon so she can eat as much food as she wants. So maybe her repetence for all of her bad actions here is her becoming that recycle curve and she can only eat garbage oh my god not only did we level n we this, changed the that theory. is this Yo, is it's growing we're, we're cooking, uh i don't know i don't know what you cook par but we're cooking some some shrimp fried curry right now Eating, eating the trash, and then what does it do with it? Do we even know? We don't do we know. know what it does. I guess they does just it, wait, have wait, metal poop. Isn't it? Yeah, like, is it get energy from that? Because that's kind of a good ability, if you ask me. me that's dog, honestly, though. like... <laughs> well, no, what, like, what, like is, they... what is the dog going to use its energy for to play catch? <laughs> Sanji and Frankie are going with Vegapunk down to the Fabrio phase. Mm. Yeah. This is the last thing I think we're, we're going to talk about here, but... Those two characters specifically are like, hey, let's go downstairs. Let's see what happens. Let's go protect good man Vegapunk. And of course, they want to save Bonnie. How do you think right. the Fabrio phase is going to go now that those two are going down? And not just that, but in this chapter, Edison lowers the security dome so that they can go down. And then he says he's going to get the security dome right back up after they pass. Do you think anything's right. going to happen from all of this? Because I kind of see a weird setup where maybe Edison gets taken out. I don't know by who, considering Kizaru and uh, Luchi are both being stalled right now. So nobody really has the liberty to take down Edison. But if they do, 
The only person upstairs that can disable that is probably one, Lilith, because she's a Vegapunk, and two, maybe Kizaru? I don't know. Mm, I don't know. And Dork? And I say Dork? Kizaru because uh, he's been on this island a lot. And York, too, yeah. But I don't yeah. know. I, I don't know what's going to happen here. I feel like in There's a weird also... way, Edison's being set up to die. There's also this situation where, like, like the other Vegapunks, like, are they dead? Like, Shaka? Like, is yeah, he is he going to rise from the grave as a bunch of broken parts yeah or the organoids or whatever like whatever it is like we, we have the 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 uh information to know that they can just make like and, and connect and like we we don't know how far that goes but we know it's a possibility yeah. for sure um um as far as edison i've always i you know edison was an interesting one because uh edison he feels like the the closest like if we were to talk about like real world parallels right einstein of a previous era edison uh, edison was before einstein but like um just like i don't know i just it, it, it would be interesting to know which one oda chooses and i feel like edison would be the right one to choose given the whole like i don't know if electricity exists in this world right and like frankie's still using of uh, cola power as confirmed by the live actor live action director uh when he asked oda which is just like i think he was oda was just like goofing off a little bit but um edison being the one to continue on like when we we're talking about the recycle cur thing like it could be edison I, we we didn't talk about that he's already like a a mini it's it, not much would change but like if you ask me what's the difference between this and recycle cur if both of them had edison's brain not much but i had arms legs like i don't know um this one the thing with edison too is he kind of looks like uh he, he's like in the same shape as like chopper and the automata right like yeah. he's kind of similar Just so like, like that that might play yeah that might play a little bit here but um I honestly don't know what's to come of like the down what's happening downstairs because Bonnie's there, she's really cracked. You have the Vice Admirals, fine, but like Sentamaru, Bonnie, Frankie, Sanji? Sanji's going down Sanji's there. Sanji's pretty big. I, I yeah, I don't think like much can happen if Sanji's there. When Sanji's literally like in terms of priority characters to save, right? Uh it'd be Bonnie and it'd be Edison. If Edison wait, Edison's like uh what was the thing you said edison's like planning on going down too no 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 edison is in the command room and he's bringing back up the dome oh oh, oh right right, right. Yeah, he's gonna turn so it back edison, on edison's there and then vegapunk is with atlas atlas edison or uh, atlas bonnie are like the priority things and stella right yeah sanji's already saved what edison before he saved him prior um and I, I feel like I feel like when it comes to like Bonnie and all these other things, like Bonnie said, like oh Sanji's re reliable, right? Like something yeah. along those lines. I think that would come into play. Like Sanji's gonna show off a little bit. Uh, uh, I I don't know if anything meaningful is gonna happen though. Um, People are saying that only... Sanji's gonna run into Saint Saturn if Saint Saturn gets off his ass. But like I think I think a a thing that might I think the most meaningful thing that I'm looking forward to, uh, that, that, um, the most meaningful thing that I know we will get an interaction, it'll be weird if we didn't, as far as I can predict, is Bonnie sees a pacifista and we get a different reaction out of her, right? Like, Sanji's supposed to, is gonna destroy a pacifista, how does she react to that? I, I that's gonna be pretty meaningful, I think. Sanji's typically the character who, interacts with these princesses and we get the like their their heartfelt story very quickly but we get it like from pudding we get it from Vi uh, viola we get it from now i imagine bonnie would be a good version of that i think that uh mm. sanji could do that that might be why oda had bonnie say that about sanji sanji's cyborg pacifista cyborg like that's a it'll be a cool thing because prior when sanji wanted to fight the pacifista on thriller or not the pacifist like kuma right like he zoro prevented that right maybe there's an interesting interaction there right we've only seen him fight the pacifista pacifista 
Um, but maybe there's something else here too. Uh, and so as far as what's to come from downstairs, I think Sanji is the biggest reason why nothing like absurd, like traumatic, dramatic, anything like that should happen. Um, and you're probably correct that like Saturn would be the reason to think otherwise. And then the other reason is our prior conversation where we spent like an hour talking about the vice admirals because like doll is there <laughs> like doll doll is there and she looks like a girl version of katakuri and she fights with her legs like the sanji get uh diffused i guess or negated by her existence like that can he not uh deal with that then who's dealing with that maybe who's the german dna doll? kicks in and he's like you know what dolls different women yeah women yeah <laughs> i hate yeah. women like you just it, uh, that would be the craziest his, his mom line. is in heaven just crying like oh god sanji why <laughs> no like, he, like his eyebrows flip and he and, and then he's just he just becomes like <laughs> misogynistic <laughs> like it'd be that'd be i don't even know what odo would be cooking if that would be that the would case be so but like, weird. like I, we've gone too like he far with the sanji brother. thing that he i i don't know i feel like it'd be weird if he switched now but yeah i mean i mean so knows? this is th the I'm reason why i it. said that is because what does it mean to be emotionless? What does it mean to the Germa DNA? Because some people have taken it so far to say like, oh, now when Sanji does that, he's an asshole just like his brothers. I'm like, I don't think that's, that would only make sense that Sanji's power up would make him permanently a douche. Like that just doesn't, it, I think he's different and he's just afraid because that's the example but all he has to do is be intentional with what he does and he'll be fine and but there is a world where he's just like oh no it's a woman let me flip my eyebrow real quick yeah. and then he just takes out and then, and then he just flame you on know, and then you know just... how he only uses the like kicks to fight people imagine he starts whipping out the fist for them he's like ah here we go oh, i've been waiting for this cracks his knuckles <laughs> Just gets super cursed. Wait, okay. He, no, no, he he poisons up? them. He only serves oh, food no. and he poisons. No, he would. I mean, no, that's the furthest. No, that's even yeah, that's worse. The worst, that's the worst thing you do. But what does it mean for the Jerma stuff? Worse. Like I don't know. Sanji would Jerma's never do that. known for Sanji, poisoning. Sanji has only poisoned Zoro. <laughs> But Jer Jerma, like when people, I'm telling, like I've literally talked to people. I'm like. Why do you think that the German DNA upgrade, upgrade, you're using the word upgrade, is now, like, now Sanji's, like, like a World War II the leader? Like, I don't know where we were going with that one, but they're like, yeah, like, he's an asshole now. That's his power up. I'm like, you, do you genuinely think this? And, like, I've seen this, like, the same person, like, not same person, same people on TikTok, and it's TikTok, so it's like, eh. I'm surprised that it's not like uh, obvious. Uh, honestly, on Twitter, it probably has the same discourse. I just don't read people's tweets because <laughs> it's not worth the time, um, unless it's like a normal person yeah. or a normal conversation. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I do want to. That is something I, I, I want to know. We're on the island of science, the island of future. He's fighting cyborgs. The god scient godhead of science his sign knows what that means is is here uh vegapunk bonnie like there's so much here i think i think the separation is that luffy's up there he figures out something kazaru's up there and sanji maybe learns more about himself down here because this is this is a good place for that to happen egghead should be that place we didn't allow for any of them to interact with vegapunk in a meaningful way but sanji has now gone through most of the entirety of the the plant and also he gathered stuff for vegapunk which was mentioned here um and then on top of that sanji is also always always the character that goes off on his own and we find out later what he did he he goes off on his own and he's like yeah like i figured this out and he's lobby like th that was an important one literally every single time a uh, little garden whatever he's always doing his own thing and it's a meaningful thing a fruitful thing he did that on dress rosa um i think this is an, an opportunity for that which you know me saying that's already got the Zor zkk blood boiling it's like what no zoro's gonna be in both places he's gonna take the nine admirals and and 
<laughs> Luchi. Oh, okay, so I got, I, got, I got three questions. One, bouncing off of Sanji, do you think there's yeah. a chance? We, we talked about it before, Neo Mads. Do you think that there's a chance that they show up here? Because, I mean, the Gross. godhead of science is here. It, it yeah. would make... I mean, we got Vegapunk here now, too, on the Fabrio phase. Do you think there's a chance where Judge and Caesar also show up? And then, you know, obviously, I don't think they'd beat Saturn, but do you think there's, like, a confrontation bet between scientists? Um, and not to mention, Neomans would be perfect for stalling out, what, the Vice Admirals and the 30,000 Marines, because Jeremiah has a whole army. I feel like that would be pretty yeah. pretty, pretty worthwhile to have here. Like, I think Neomans is, like, the second best option for the Straw Hats right now, behind the Grand Fleet. Okay, so then... The thing is, like, they just met up, right? And they are like, the v Vega Punk is there. They they all have grievances with him. Um, I could see it if there was a reason outside of revenge, right? Like, if they if they were had a plan, like they wanted to make Ser like uh, their own version of Seraphim, but they were all missing an ingredient, and they're like, Vega Punk has it. Yeah, and then that was the reason they needed to rate it. It would, I think, it would have to be something along those lines. So you just want more motivation out of them to come here, rather than just yeah, mega punk. And so, if for anybody who wants Neomads to come, uh, you would be able to convince me by displaying using one of the things that we have seen from Vegapunk already. And saying like this would be this is the reason like this is the reason yeah. all three of them or if you could reasonably make it so that like these three things they know about because Queen we know Queen is espionage man he's been copying stealing whatever he knows right but like if there were three things that each one of them needed and you combine them and there would be a meaningful thing that they would create sure um, maybe it's one thing. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, at the moment, off the top of my head, I can't even compile like all the stuff that he has. We were shown a lot. Um, and I don't know what, because the thing, the other problem is they didn't like Vegapunk I th to a certain extent because like Vegapunk memed, right? Like they were the, uh, what, what was it? The scientists of destruction or some shit. Was it? What was it? Mads is uh Mads was uh they were scientists trying to better humanity. Science is trying to better humanity, but they made weapons of, of destruction, right? Yeah. And 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 so you have Judge, you have Caesar, you have Queen. Each one of them are making crazy things. Crazy things that are that make sense of their source material. Caesar, gas, Germa, Germany, like uh -huh. paint the picture anymore, but we have Einstein now with Vegapunk. And here you have Vegapunk who essentially defects from them and is making guns that m can turn bullets into powder or, or flowers and it's like that pisses them off for some reason so there's also that part too that they need to know that like oh vegapunk has something and maybe he vegapunk used it for good or used it his own way and they're like that's not what you could do with this you could make it evil ah and then they they take it like the microwave for the food microwave like maybe it's something dumb like that if someone could take one of those things and 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 come up with an idea that that would probably be a solid way to convince me but at the moment i don't think Neo, there's not like a concrete reason for neomads to just like coincidentally choose now to come because because they don't like, like what so, so yeah, you just want more reasoning. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I need reasoning. The, the other argument too, not argument, other factors, like technically the Straw Hats are on good terms with Derma, like technically, and like same with like a little bit with Sanji, like they don't like him, but they're like, it's not shit, yeah. you know, like, so there is that weird thing. But so maybe, like, maybe, maybe they looked at the newspaper and see that the Straw Hats are here and not, they don't want to come to help them, but they're like, hey, this is the best time to steal vegapunk's technology yeah yeah there, there's there, mm. there could be a lot of things here uh and i think if neo mads did show up they would benefit from it more than lose if neo mads does show up i just thought like a, a reason why i could like it could um not saying this is necessary but like if judge and vegapunk or whatever they made like a better raid suit for Sanji like one that fits him better because Judge saw him yeah. and that would be an example of like 
you know, I hate Judge, right? Worst dad, awful Judge person, is awesome. right? But at the same time, he does care. His care is just not unconditional. Now that he's seen that Sanji is capable, maybe, and, and he regrets, like, you know, a lot of what happens on Whole Kick Out. Not with Sanji, but, like, his own situation with his own children and his own stuff. And he's like... And, and so he wants to like still be a, a dad to a certain extent, and then he he try he makes that suit, and maybe it's a crack suit. I don't know. It'd be kind of cool. I could like that idea, and I'd like it because then it'd be sick if Sanji's bounty poster was like was a uh, stealth black, you know, like some shit yeah. like that. It'd be that, I'd like that. That's that's like where my head was at, and I was like working backwards. That that'd be a cool reason for Neo Mads to come in, but. Yeah, I don't, I don't even know if it's necessary for third party at the moment. I know a lot of people are saying that I'm included in that, but also it doesn't need to, you know? Yeah, yeah. So. I mean, I, I, I agree with you. Like, I think a third party is going to show up, but I don't think we necessarily need it. It's because yeah. we're not fighting an all out war here. We don't, the Straw Hats don't want to. Like, they really yeah. just want to get out of here as, as quick as possible. We're on the same page too about because people have been asking me like, but but what about Blackbeard? What is Blackbeard gonna do? When is he gonna interrupt? He's this not fight? gonna hop in uh, here until the very end. Yeah, if that. I, yeah, exactly. I I'm I'm with that one like almost one hundred percent. Like there's that nine. There's like a five percent maybe because of his power that we see him interact with Gear Five, Luffy, and Kizaru. It's it's almost like the reason why that 5% exists and it's really powerful is because it's almost like too opportunistic for Oda to put those three powers in the same room together and not show that off, right? That almost feels like, like I feel like Oda would be like, ah, oh, but I want to show all those cool things in one, like, you know, playing with like the dolls again. But like at the same time, you're, I, I agree with your interpretation of Blackbeard was shown after the refugee people were leaving. He probably has that ship. I don't agree with the, the, all the Devon theories uh, so far. Maybe one later convinces me. I don't see that at the moment. Maybe a vice admiral is it. Interesting. If Blackbeard himself is here, I think it's at the very, very end. Maybe a, a few panels of interaction. It's gone. It's done. But I think it's cleaner if he's not here. And his it, contribution was not only did the Straw Hats not save vegapunk in the way they wanted to because that could be changed um but blackbeard again helped the world government unintentionally intentionally because on the path towards what he's wanted he's helped the world government almost every single time ace whitebeard bonnie he was the one who tied Bonnie up and gift wrapped her to Akainu. And it's like Blackbeard has always been doing that. Blackbeard, uh, you know, I, I, in my opinion, Blackbeard is the reason why CP0 found uh, the Rev's base, Baltigo, because they were the only leak of information that had where the location was. They didn't even have the location, actually. They had the Vivre card that guided them. So the only way it makes sense for them to have gone there, which I talk about in the, in the Bogart theory, is that cp0 had to be informed of that viver card and that they needed to follow blackbeard there's a few other connotations to that but now that we know that blackbeard wants to be a part of the world government hey what did the world government just say eliminate the ship eliminate those people well maybe they can't but blackbeard took care of it you know so then it's it's like a perfect uh segue in hey you guys wanted to to get rid of i did you guys a favor can i join the the world government now like the reverie you know and obviously not a celestial dragon but like can i can i do like he, that could be a, he and what we know of he's collecting bargaining chips that's what he called kobe he's like you might not be as important as i thought you were and you might be underselling yourself but it doesn't matter because like you're we're, we're sticking to the plan anyways and you're just a chip in the negotiation right yeah um so i could see that that is literally it and it might not even be that the whole situation is resolved in this moment. It might be that like Blackbeard announces, "I si I killed all of the people," and then the the Gore say like, "Oh shit, thanks thanks for that." What do you? Thank, thank you. And then Blackbeard's King Blackbeard. like, "Yeah, make me a sovereign nation. I took care of the demons of Egghead Island." You know, like he's the O'Hara. Yeah, and sent, then the, in reality, the he has them captured, and they're all just getting their memories extracted by yeah yeah whatever her name is putting pudding yeah 
So it's interesting. Man, that gets so stuffed. Yeah, it's so and cool. the last thing I, I want to bring up now, that was, that was question two. Question three, how do you feel yeah. about our Sunny theory from last week now that Lilith is the sole person that is in charge of the Thousand Sunny? Oh, it's Sunny. gone. <laughs> it's, it's wraps, bro. Everything she touches dies. The Sea Beasts? Gone. <laughs> Vega Force One? She's the harbinger of death. <laughs> Like, yeah. literally every time she wants something to, or, or it's like, this is so cool, dead, like, gone, bye, El Bozo. Like, General Frankie's the only thing I think could survive, maybe, but that's because it's, like, made of Wapo metal, and maybe it's, like, it, like, maybe Kizaru casually broke Vega Force 1, but maybe he can't casually break General Frankie, but the Thousand Sunny is not Wapo metal. Brother, you <laughs> Believe it or not, have it's no idea. Wood. Do you even know what Adam Wood is, Par? <laughs> <laughs> hit me with the the what people uh yeah hit so, you with so in your if you guys video. don't know if you, if you only watch these videos and not my other videos um me and par cooked up a what theory that the thousand sunny uh would potentially get damaged not not like exactly like obliterated like it's gone 100 percent, but we, we said it might get destroyed d damaged whatever and then it gets repaired at Elbath. and one of the main pushbacks is that or one of the like major pushbacks is that the thousand sunny is made out of atom wood and it can't be destroyed yeah i i just gotta say like atom wood is not poneglyph like, yeah I don't, imagine sailing I don't on know, a poneglyph <laughs> Like, like at that point, the the man marked by flames is sailing on a black, the the elusive and, black. And hockey here's the thing, pineapple. I I said that you know if anybody were upstairs to destroy the thousand sunny, it would be high tier hitters, right? We can make fun of Rob Lucci all we want, but you know he has a pretty powerful Shigan in uh, Rankaku. Like I feel like if he really wanted to put all of his back into it, he could destroy the thousand sunny, and then even Kizaru, yeah. which is where I kind of push Kizaru to. And a lot of people are like, yo, Kizaru can't damage the Thousand Sunny because it's Adam Wood. And it's like, no way. Yeah, I, 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 I saw that. That, that was, was like, crazy. Damn. Like, saying I'm glad that you... Kizaru, an Admiral, can't destroy an Adam Wood ship is kind of kind of wild. So so if, for people who don't know, uh, uh, the plan was, was that Sai, uh, like... I, I, I've been I haven't posted a long video, but I want to and I'm going to post this theory and Sai gave like the the main points of it and he knows that there was like a really good parallel that we talked about in the discussion video that wasn't there, which is like the uh, um, the Kuma protecting thing. But like that aside, uh, people, I'm going to leak it here. I'm going to leak it here. And I don't think you're aware of this either because you didn't respond to people saying but Frankie's dream is the Thousand Sunny. Why would we destroy like the Thousand Sunny? I feel like that's such a needless one because Frankie. So Frankie's dream is to have the Thousand Sunny go around the world. It can still go around the world, and also Frankie's dream was pushed to the side for the most part. It's kind of like a, a, a background thought right now. Bringing the ship back into the equation is great for Frankie. That's that's beautiful. That would be so much development. Here's Here's the thing, I, and so this is gonna be the like one of the main like you know hooks of the video that gets people to say wow. But I, I like leaking things here, and you know if you're watching up until what like the three hour mark on this video, you do you er, you thank you for being here. I appreciate um, you guys. But yeah, that's not Frankie's dream. <laughs> Frankie's dream, actually, when you go back, and I recently did this because of Tom, and this is also why I like the theory because somehow it ended up connecting to the Tom theory a little bit. Frankie said, I, yes, ship a dream of, uh, uh, I want to build the ship of dreams and I want to be riding on it. One. Right after that, he says, the ship may be damaged or in tatters, but I imagine that when it gets to that last island, it'll be glowing. That's what he says. And I'm gonna say it right He's... here. Go to chapter go, go to chapter 890. Big Mom casually rips the thousand sunny up. <laughs> not even, not even in her right mind. You're telling me Kizaru like can people are saying that Kizaru can whoop Big Mom. I agree. You're telling me Big Mom can casually destroy yeah. the thousand sunny. No devil fruit, just just pulling it up like this. And you're telling me Kizaru can't with this devil fruit? God, get out of here, man. It's so funny. But, but it's animal. You're, you're, you're it's indestructible. You're, you're... 
You're uh, you're not so even Luffy could destroy it. Okay, I don't know. Because of how, how many people are so confident about something that's like so easily disproven that you're like, I'm I'm gonna throw it in your face. Hey, did, I might hey, even post a whole separate video part, about Adam Wood now. Part, do you think Kaido could damage the Thousand Sunny? <laughs> no, lions beat dragons. Oh Shiki god, was right. uh, superior to Kaido. Dude, dragons. Oh my god, Kaido's <laughs> Bolo breath wouldn't even scratch it. It would survive it, actually. <laughs> no, no, no. no. Let, 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 uh, here, here, here. I'm going insane. I, I'm surprised they didn't use this. You could argue that the Thousand Sunny has the same durability as Kaido because Kaido fell from a sky island and survived, and the Thousand Sunny fell from Wano and did even something oh God, crazier. Right. Landed in water. Kaido couldn't even land in water. It survived. And I'll have you know, oh, hitting the water is like water? hitting concrete. Oh, my, oh my goodness, Par. You're, you're crazy. Technically, Kaido hit softer ground because hitting water is like hitting concrete. Yeah, it's hitting concrete from a certain distance. Yeah, that's it. It's over. <laughs> I mean, Kaido didn't hit concrete. Do you think Kaido can you. destroy the Thousand Sunny even? Oh, no, oh man. Not so. even Mother you Flame know, has no shot at it. Now that I think about it, you know when Garp Couldn't threw that take giant cannonball at the Thousand Sunny and they felt the need to get out? <laughs> I don't even think the Thousand Sunny would have capsized. I think it would have just floated back up with zero damage. I think it would have ate it. Do you think a Galaxy <laughs> Impact could damage a thousand? Come on. Galaxy Impact, that's it trash. Just... It's Adam Wood, the baby. Thou... Have you seen the Thousand Sunny's Gao cannons? Oh my god, the coup de boo? You know what? <laughs> oh, the Zoro's, Zoro's, I'm going to say right here, Zoro's kind of lame. He blocked Big Mom and Kaido's attack. When in reality, you just got to put the Thousand Sunny in front of him. And it's it's going to survive the Hakuoku <laughs> oh. sovereignty. That's, that's GG, buddy. <laughs> Divine departure, more like Divine Sunny, because it's Adam Wood. <laughs> if only Kid didn't abolish their uh, allegiance with the Straw Hats, because Killer would have been saved if the Thousand Sunny was just. Oh, I mean, yeah. technically Shanks wouldn't destroy the Thousand Sunny, because that's plot armor. <laughs> but like, because if the Thousand Sunny showed up, Shanks actually would have stopped, because it was like, oh wait, this is Luffy's ship. But in reality, if the Thousand Sunny took Shanks's hit. It's Adam Wood, baby. Who Adam are you Wood. <laughs> oh, I'm looking at it right now. Not only does Big Mom casually lift up the uh, the Thousand Sunny, but she also uses uh, her sword to just cut the Thousand Sunny's deck up. She is. I, I, I'm Jinbei... going through chapter eight ninety, and she is she is destroying this ship, and she's not Doesn't even in Jinbei her right mind. Push her off, yep, and it takes I'm off looking the at it. Jimbei pushes Big Mom off of the thousand sunny vagabond drill be pretty strong in my opinion but let me tell you who's stronger i think he's already stronger than jimbei hot take and guess what jimbei this isn't even his strongest technique and that destroyed the railing of the thousand sunny man i should have put this chapter in that video i'm so mad at myself i am so upset at myself that i didn't it's put this so on there and then frankie's dream you already you already gave the, the pushback to that the thousand sunny can get damaged it is no big deal the, the dream will survive it's Adam Wood, but Adam Wood isn't Adamantium. It's not Poneglyph. It's not... <laughs> it, it, it isn't the end-all be-all, guys. Like, th th there are better things. You know what I would argue is stronger than Adam Wood? Yggdrasville. The, the, the tree in Elbath. If that isn't Adam Wood itself, I would say that tree is probably just as strong. Like, come on. I'm so done. I hate... Yeah, man, it's like a rant. I'm sorry if you're, you got, you're one of those guys who commented that, and you're coming here, and me and Par just hagging it up. But I have seen so many of those comments... And I, I've just given up responding at this point because I'm like, if you think the Thousand Sunny is indestructible, you are a madman. The Thousand Sunny, Adam Wood, by lore, can survive cannon blasts, but <laughs> it can't serve. That doesn't mean it's gonna survive Big Mom, Kizaru, you know, freaking Kaido. Like it isn't just because it can survive a cannonball doesn't mean it can survive everything that's not what was told to us when we were introduced to adamwood it could survive cannonballs brother from no name pirates and marines and random wars it can't I'm survive everything right now this is the I, I, uh, we, we got the the I'm so upset. the psi vision classic. I'm, I'm we both so went upset. on tirades. Mine was that air is gas and wind is just moving gas. And and people who think otherwise need help. Need better help, honestly. And then you're we're not sponsored by better help like, either. 
We're just yeah, that and upset. Your version is is Adam Wood is Wood. <laughs> We've seen it being broken, and We've I'm like, seen Adam Wood I, be damaged many, many times. It's not that crazy. And it's funny because I I think you you t- would take any other rebuttal in in step and stride whatever right the Frankie Dream one you, I saw you back and forth and I was fine I was like damn he does I, I want to give him the ammo and you were like you wanted to go on this tirade instead of me spoiling like most not most of a lot of the video but like the 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 fact. <laughs> <laughs> like when you're thinking of this theory right and i just want to highlight this because a lot of people have been actually critical of some of like things that i've said in my shorts because i had to consolidate so much information like well why do you have to say this why do you have to say that i'm like you understand that if i go slower and i leave out this information 90 percent or not 90 like a bunch of people are going to come out like well blah 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 how come blah, 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 this didn't happen and here uh, i was saying blah 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 but i have an example People, multiple people said, brother, you're wrong. Kaido doesn't like Fishman. Why are you saying that? And my idea of that was that Jack is a Fishman. Jack is a Fishman. And so they were like, Jack is not a Fishman. There, He's a giant. And I, I, I'm like, and it's not one. No, it's multiple. You know, I, I think I said this yesterday <laughs> to you, but I am really, <laughs> I love One Piece. Oda did such a great job. One Piece can be enjoyed by anybody out there. It can be enjoyed by, you know, <laughs> casual people like me or you. And no, it can size, also stop, be, stop. It, it can also be enjoyed by people who are absolutely lobotomized, you know? <laughs> oh, Brain damage God. victims can also enjoy One Piece. And I feel like... It's just, we, the people, see, like, they don't have to be... First hand. I responded to a bunch of people that, like, I... Jackman's, uh, Jack is a fishman? I respond to them completely fine, right? That's fine. It's such a small detail. It's not that meaningful. Not a lot of people are reading that intently, right? But it's when people are so rude. It's like the quirk thing. And too. like, oh my god. And like, say like you're absolutely wrong. This is not possible. And your version of that is, Sai, this is a dumb theory because Adam Wood is indestructible. How do you not know this by now? Are you even reading the same story as me? I can't believe you d- read one. Like that's what I literally had comments like that. I'm like, what are you talking? Like. Like, the, someone said that about, like, uh, a Rayleigh video. They're like, I can't believe you you made this video. This is so false. I'm like, I, I just read panels. Like, the entire... This video isn't even a theory. It's just me reading about how Rayleigh got saved by Hachi. That's in the store. I didn't make shit up. I put the panel on the screen. Oh. And they're still saying I made shit up. I'm like... The comparisons oh God, are funny, too. One more thing about the Sunny. But some somebody's rebuttal to to, to the, how the Thousand Sunny is indestructible is that in Wano, we had two Beastmen fodder pirates put a, two cannonballs on the ship and blew... Or, like, two <laughs> two bombs on the ship and blow it up. And it's like, brother, those are the... <laughs> that's the explosion that the Adam Wood is supposed to endure. But you can't compare two random bombs from nobodies to Admiral Kizaru, Big Mom, and Kaido. Yeah, yeah. And and the funny part was that was written because we thought that it sh- at that point, we st- if the if Adam Wood was built up to be indestructible, then that would be an awful plot point because the whole point of that was to be like, oh my god, it exp- they destroyed all the ships. And then, but then Frankie comes in and's like, this is Adam Wood, baby. But he's not using it the same way you're using it because he's saying it to two cannonballs. He's not saying it to, like, uh, the intent. Like, if, if, Ka- if That's Zoro like saying didn't block Zoro Kaku, can't cut the Thousand Sunny. Luffy and Gear 5 can't destroy the Thousand Sunny. Like, think <laughs> about that for a minute, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. I don't know what comments you got, you know but what? I, I um, Mihawk can't cut the I, Thousand Sunny either. This this is the one thing that that, that Swordsman can never cut. The Thousand Sunny, it's it's too far, too far. Yeah, yeah, too too much plot armor. Yeah, Insane. now because I, I saw some of the comments and we talked about it, but now I want to go back. Don't do it before these Save post yourself. up. Like, cause I imagine this gets posted up, and the, some of those people don't watch until this point where they we like absolutely roast like. The, the and the thing is it's like my my take is like it's fine to not know i mean we sometimes forget yeah. things some we look up things it's, in the stream i am fine if people but, were saying that and they just they, they forgot or they they have a lapse in judgment or you know they're open to different ideas but a lot of people aren't like they're they're really just closed yeah. off where even if you hit them back with like the simplest thing like if, if you're watching this video and you're like oh i didn't know that happened to the thousand sunny oh it can't get damaged cool that's awesome yeah but a lot of people are closed-minded 
where they put themselves in a bubble where it's like, yeah, the thousand percent can never get hurt. Like like me and you, for example, me and you throw out a bunch of BS theories, right? Like we we mm. we talk about possibilities <laughs> out the wazoo. But guess what? We're not yeah. married to any theory. Like even with you, yeah. I think a minute ago, you're like, yeah, you're ninety five percent sure, but five percent could be something else. Like we keep the door yeah. open. Like, I would yeah. love to be proven wrong. I have no qualms about having something I say be proven wrong because that's how it is. But you yeah. can't deny fact. We, we've never denied outright facts or closed off doors before and say something yeah. can never happen yeah. unless it's been stated multiple times. Uh, or call you... Like, even in this point, we're not even... We haven't even insulted the people who commented that. I mean, like, you were, you were doing that out of, like, you know... It, but it wasn't, like, to them. And that's the thing. It's like... It's like, oh, come on. Like, <laughs> you're more insane for for saying we're dumb for not knowing, but then being wrong. Like, that's kind of embarrassing. Like, and and that's the thing. It's like it, being but part confident. Adam would. <laughs> being so confident about something is like, wow, I don't know. Like, you think that the My least next short's going to be Google Adam it. Wood can be damaged. I'm going to, I'm a crap that uh, Bajrat, get ready. <laughs> I'm, I'm sending you one. I'm sending yeah, you a new video, buddy. I'll, I'll do one. It's like, these are all the times that ships were destroyed. <laughs> oh, surprise, surprise. They're made the Thousand Sunny? <laughs> the Thousand Sunny's in there? Whoa. No, you're right. Honestly, I'm good. I'm curious because I might. I might want to test that out because, like, seeing, I want to see the anime viewers' perspective. We need, we need to do that. I, I feel, you know what, Par? I think me and you have the push now. I, I think if we really wanted to push an agenda together, we probably could. If, if we release like two or three shorts or a video all about the like yeah. Adam Wood being destroyed, I feel like we could change the narrative and fix the world. Not fix the world, but we we can make it worse. <laughs> like we could do it with Adam Wood, but we could take it even further. Maybe we can push like a Luchi agenda. Yeah, yeah, yeah within know. this, I heard Morge hit the ZKK, oh, not ZK, oh, God, the ZK, the raid failing thing at around, like, 100k, so, like, eh, Honestly, yeah, if we maybe, combine maybe. together, what, like, you're at 70, which is pretty big, and then I'm at 50 <laughs> again, so it's like, yo, like, we're, that's 120, you know, 120k, and we have different audiences, too, for the most part, so, you know, like, I think oh, we could cover what's some our... bases, man, what's, what's the agenda, what do we want to push? The recycle curve is too low. We gotta we gotta aim. We gotta higher. aim higher. Maybe I think Adam would would be a would be a spicy one. I'm re um, I'm ready for the Adam. I'm in. I'm so heated by this stupid ship. We gotta have we gotta choose something that will take five years to confirm, and yeah, something that won't be confirmed <laughs> till the very end of the series. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <sighs> oh man, crocodiles. Luffy's mom is so. I I, I don't like Croco mom. Yeah, you know, I know. people I, actually I mean, I like so female. People take the very tame theory and thought that Crocodile is a woman, but they take it a step further and say Crocomom, which is where you lose me. But you have people who actually believe Crocomom, and I'm like, no way. Yeah, there's no yeah, way. Yeah. I always, whenever it comes up, I always say I believe Croco Crocodile could be a female, uh, could have been a female. That's plausible. Like I can't even put a percentage because that's how plausible it is, and it, it wouldn't even change the story, in my opinion. Like it wouldn't do anything different at all. Period. Croco mom, though. That, that would. That's, that's, that's like a, a story different. changing event. <laughs> like <laughs> yeah, that's, that would be bigger than different. finding out what the One Piece is, right? Like Crocodile's like, I'm your mom, Luffy. It's like, whoa. <laughs> like, <laughs> like you know what I mean? It's like <laughs> you mean I hit my mom? <laughs> like what? My mom tried to kill me three times and she poisoned me. Like you know, like and th like, that's what, like a world changing reveal? event. Crocodile being a woman is like, oh, that's Ivankov's secret. That's Crocodile's secret. Cool, let's move on. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's it's like it, it's a it, it's, it's a secret that, that allows you into knowing why people can blackmail him, the connections he has. Like if the, if that's the case, great, awesome, cool, love it. Croco mom though is is like is is like the like we know it's like Oda's cocaine a, shark. a big. <laughs> it's like you have no, a shark and then you have cocaine gonna, shark. No, you're gonna love this analogy. We know Oda loves Star Wars. It would be a bastardized version of Luke, I am your father. It's like Luffy, I am your mother. Like what is no. what? <laughs> 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 All my adventures are gone since you're here now. Like moms are awful Mama! for adventures. Like he just has a flashback of Dadan and uh, man, like 
I don't think people understand how game changing Croco Mom would just be for no reason. And it, it, no, it's, it's yeah, something no that reason. hasn't even been hinted at either. Yeah, yeah. It's it's uh the Croco. The thing is, and it's funny. It, it, this is this is an interesting thing because I think it might. <laughs> I'll tell you after. I'll tell you after. Be, uh, but 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 uh, Oda said he wants to draw Luffy's birth story. Oh, has so, he? Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. Big. He said he really. Yeah, he actually said it in a crazier way than just saying I want to draw Luffy's birth story. He because what he said in his he message and this is from twenty eighteen. <laughs> he said this in twenty eighteen. So the Croco mom theory was well alive by then. I'm per I, I I'm pretty sure because even when I wasn't a content creator. I knew about that theory because that's how like widespread that had become. Um, but the, uh, what's it called? And the reason why he said that in 2018, I believe was he said that the thing that he wants to draw the most is the story of the Marines. He wants to draw, uh, how everyone interacts with Garp. He wants to draw a Kuzan, a Kainu, Smoker, Tashigi. He's, Tashigi was the craziest name. <laughs> Tashigi. <dropped there. laughs> He wants to draw Tashigi <laughs> achieving her dream of getting every sword in the world. Yeah, like like I read that and I think I like visive like vomited. I was like, nah, I need to make a video nah. on that. I, I I think that's gonna be my break week video. Why Tashigi's dream is impossible. Yeah, I'm the I've hardest that. dream just, in One Piece. I when I I wrote that video and I was like, man, it's gonna come off as like I'm such a random hater for no reason, and I just didn't want to do that. But like I do, I it, the video is scripted. I have the entire script. I could just send you my send, script. Send honestly. me the script. I'll make the video. <laughs> I literally will, and then I'll say credits to Part Vision for for writing this script. No, do it. Yeah, I'll I'll I'll, I'll, I'll remind me tonight. I'll I'll send All it. Right, but um, um, but so he said that he said garb thing, but then he said. Uh, what would be really cool is Dragon. I want to draw Dragon and how it connects to Garp and the Marines. And he said all this stuff in the revs. And he's like, and then he kept on rambling and rambling. Literally, that's how I described the thing. And he said, oh, man, there's so much to draw. I guess I'll just draw uh, Luffy then. Because everyone ends up connecting to Luffy. It'll be interesting to see Luffy's birth story. I really want to draw that. Some, I think that was ex a, almost exactly in what he my, said. In my opinion, I think there's a high chance that whoever Luffy's mom is used to be a part of the marines or world government yeah I because, like because that of idea. garp I, and then dragon just like all the marine ties to, with luffy i feel like it would just make sense yeah yeah i i think i think the we might even know where she's from I don't know what I'm gonna say, oh but, uh, like, are you in the same boat as me wait what boat are you on raijian island oh that's a no, new I'm boat kidding. i like I that, boat. that up. okay I mean, me and Threeville talked about, uh, I mean, a lot of people, Amazon Lily, yeah. Empress thing. That one's there. Uh, that one makes a lot of sense to me. But I, 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 I stumbled upon something recently. Might, might end up making it into the video. I just don't want to enter. Because the, the, here's the issue. And this is the thing about the, you experience this, making that, putting that theory out and getting the most unhinged rebuttal. And then that somehow, like, like spanning outside of the idea because that's the problem right you can have a 20 40 minute video doesn't matter if there's like an idea that just somehow like is wrong to somebody that somehow detracts to the whole thing and so now the the sunny being indestructible is like like th that one's not even a good example because that's so off base but like in the jack is a fishman one that wasn't even a part of the thing. I was saying that Kawamatsu was the only person not put to slave labor on Wano. And Orochi said like five different five different times in across four different chapters that he wanted all the scabbards dead. And then there's this uh, Kawamatsu's alive. And then Ka Kaido said everybody's working and so did Orochi. And then Kawamatsu's ring. And then they're like, this is a dumb theory because Jack isn't a fishman. I'm like, what? What is that? That is so crazy. <laughs> but like, uh, uh, what was it called? In uh, um, in in this video that I'm talking about, the reason why I wouldn't put the anything related to Luffy's mom is because that would be oh I don't believe in this theory because Luffy's mom is emu, Luffy's mom is crocodile, Luffy. Uh, how do you not know about Croco mom? Th this theory th that's literally the response. So many people would be like, oh no, Luffy's mom is from Amazon Lily. Luffy's mom's from here. Luffy's mom. I was like, well, none of that is canon. How are you gonna rebut the theory with a another theory like <laughs> it, don't it, it, underestimate humanity 
Yeah, it's it all comes sometimes. down to that. Never underestimate humanity, Par. How dare you? Yeah, God. yeah. Sometimes. We, he can't we win, are, are, you know. Um, I, I, I love talking about One Piece online and you know, with you and just with the community, but sometimes I look at it and I'm just like, gotta... we, we, we make sacrifices. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, you find us both on a different channel talking completely not about One Piece. Maybe the name is like 50 50 yeah, podcast. Yeah, 50 50 podcast. Uh, who knows, man? Yeah, who knows? Who knows? And, and hey, maybe we speak on that uh, channel about becoming Roblox creators because of that one crazy idea. <laughs> yeah, Par, Par's joined the Roblox dating service. <laughs> is that a thing? Oh, yeah, you didn't even know. Okay, we'll talk about that here in a little bit. If you guys want to check out that no. conversation, go to the 50 50 podcast. Uh, one final thing. Robin isn't in this chapter. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a good final thing. Yeah, Robin's not here. I don't think she got captured. I know people um, keep on saying that. I, I have a lot of pushback towards that just Taku. because we have so many people on this island with observation, like Sanji, Jimbei, Luffy, Usopp even with the cameras. Like, there's the security dome that's up and down, up and down, but we're talking about how that's kind of useless. But regardless, Bonnie, or not Bonnie, Robin isn't here, but I, I think that it's more of a... Uh, a Robin thing where she's probably just off exploring or Oda just mm. doesn't have enough panel space because let's be real. We have nine straw hats, not including Luffy. We have Kizaru, Marines, like the Vice Admirals didn't get any love here. Saturn got one panel. I just think genuinely we just don't have room for Robin. I mean, even Brooke, because... we only saw the back of his head, <laughs> you know? Nami had yeah. this much panel time. Like, I, I, I really the just think with... Robin couldn't be drawn yeah and i'm not gonna uh is we both have to go too but yeah. uh with robin um the thing is she's also like sanji she always disappears but she always has the same thing in mind which is history she knows that there is history on this island that even vegapunk isn't aware of yeah. right because like vegapunk doesn't know why this i uh giant ended up there I'm pretty sure the legendary iron giant was just con was there. And Robin heard that and story, bro. She would, she, she might, you know, she might be. Yeah, you know, like he knows that they they move the the thing, but they couldn't figure it out, and then it just they just put it there, and it's like why two hundred years ago, et cetera, et cetera. And from memory, again, I I I pretty sure he doesn't have that full context but he divulged that he has all of the memories of ohara he, he probably she, she probably just found out maybe about from bonnie about like kuma stuff like there's so many different things oh hearing that kuma is like an ancient race type of thing or or a special tribe there's probably something here that she's trying to find and she took a tour recently when the whole trader saga happened so maybe something caught her eye and maybe she's doing something i would put money on it's probably history related because yeah. that's literally Every that, like, single makes, time it, it she... makes the most sense just for it to be history related. Yeah, yeah. And and uh and the other reason Maybe why, even why now? records. That would be another place. Yeah, and, to and visit. it would be the question would be like why why now? And the why now is because the island is being sieged by Marines and an admiral, so maybe this is the last chance they'll be able to. So like she's no she's no stranger to an island getting buster called and trying to like all the Extrapulate citizens Extrapulate all the history she can in a short amount of time. Yeah, because that's exactly what the citizens did on Ohara and they died except for Saul, but Saul didn't wasn't a part of that necessarily. But and she escaped. So now she's like, I I'll be the change. I'll be I'll carry on the will of Ohara. Ah, that's what she's I gonna be doing. I will carry on the will of eggs. Yes, exactly. You never know, man. You never know out here. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And with that being said, part one final thing. What do you rate the chapter? Oh my god. Hey, someone count. Someone count how many times. And one final. Time. That's my catchphrase. Someone... One final thing. I'll have you know. <laughs> or no, no, no. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Sorry, so, so, let me tell you. At least we're more energetic than Saint Saturn. That guy's actually falling asleep. I I stopped my 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 monitor right here at his panel, and. You yeah. didn't read the spoilers, but they said Saint Saturn was staring menacingly at the very end. And I got to this and I busted up laughing because brother is falling asleep. <laughs> He's probably going to wake up tomorrow and be like, what happened? Egghead? Did I? We already got here. Like after what eating it, a it, sausage, he just passed out, man. Craziest theory. It's not mine, but I haven't heard this and I'm surprised. What if the crazy theory that 
Saturn is astral projecting is true, and that's what he's doing. He's not. No. That's how he fights. He just that would be kind of cool. Like imagination powers like Luffy in a way. Yeah. Like he it's Brook, but like different. Yeah. He's not like dead. <laughs> And then, <laughs> and then maybe this is where your theory that Brook and the soul powers are OP comes in because Brook oh, is the yeah. one guy that can hit him right now. And then this could yeah. feed into my Gear Six theory where Luffy gets like a spiritual upgrade. Yeah, knows, man. there's a lot of theories that are getting a fed lot of with weird this. Theories. This, this one panel could be the jumping yeah. point to the v v validate. Shiver me the timbers. Astral projection. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got to this panel oh. and I think I was like doing a live reaction to this chapter uh, with the raw. And you said shiver me timbers. I didn't say shiver me timbers, but I, I started shaking. I was like, <laughs> like, like my, my my teeth were clattering and everything. I was like, guys, watch out! <laughs> He's coming. <laughs> and then you really it's think so about funny. it, and uh, Saint Saturn was last seen in a in a in a room. So I was like, guys, there's pro there's probably a good chance that he's just staring at a wall. <laughs> like, there's a good chance he's just he's actually just falling asleep than anything, unless he oh, obviously you know a... One Piece. Uh, he he's a big guy. He's important, so he's he's definitely gonna be doing something. But it's just funny to think that where we left him was in a room with nothing in there. So he's probably just staring at nothing. It's actually it's dozing hilarious. off. <laughs> that. that... The expectation. Oh, he's he's angry. He's staring menacingly into the 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 egghead island. Now he's just closed off in a room on a ship that's probably not even that close to the yeah, island. Yeah, because Kizad had to <laughs> teleport from the ship all the way to the island. So there's a good chance Saint Saturn's still like a solid two three minutes away. You know. Yeah. He's not yeah, even there like, yet. Yeah, like even by ship, it'd probably take a solid chapter to get there. In, Imagine given how slow Saint Saturn tries to yell out an order to the pacifista, and he starts choking because he hasn't had his oatmeal yet. <laughs> his throat's kind of dry. <laughs> He's like, "Where's my sippy cup sausage?" <laughs> I I didn't. Where's my sippy cup marine? And then he just like shoots him. You didn't bring it fast enough. <laughs> like, oh goodness, how gracious. dare you let me choke on my sausage? There's there's so much here, man. I'm excited for the next chapter, but we got a break. Otis said, uh, yeah. sorry for the break, guys, but we're going to go back to our regular schedule. And then he he hit us with two chapters and he's gone. I was like, dang, bro. He he, he pulled a fast one on us. Like, I don't mind the breaks whatsoever. I'm, I'm not like... I wouldn't be upset with two chapters, though. Yeah. What's up? A month. I wouldn't be upset with two chapters Oh, a month, yeah, though. me neither. You know, it stalls out the series yeah. in a way. But at the same time, it's like, <laughs> dang, man. Only two chapters, huh? Yeah, maybe... Oh, maybe when Oda said three years, he was like, ah, oh, but what if we... If we go to two years, two week schedule, then it's five or six years. Yeah, yeah he's prolonging it. <laughs> he, he's not ready for, for, for One Piece to be done. Maybe it's... Maybe he took the break for, for Kagura Bachi, the, the new shonen manga that's out. He, he, yeah, he wants so to give that time to build up. extra competitive. Yeah, and then so he could tear it down and then meme on. Yeah, he's waiting for Kagura Bachi's, like, biggest <laughs> chapter, and he's gonna bring back One Piece. <laughs> Imagine every time uh, oh, Kagura Bachi has a really big chapter for the first time ever, Shanks just shows up in, <laughs> in One Piece just to yeah, steal like the he, attention. He like talks to the directors at Shonen Jump and he gets like the manuscripts, which he has had said before. He's gotten early manuscripts yeah. of other mangas. I'm sure he and can. And so he sees it, it's like, oh, this is going to be a good chapter for them. Except Shanks shows yeah, up this the, the week. the finale of My Hero, he's like, but what if Shanks dies on this chapter? <laughs> he's just that competitive. Oh, he just wants to steal the competition. He's like, that'll be hilarious. He's like, you know what? I, you know what I've been saving for this very moment. A Nell comes down from the moon. <laughs> like. <laughs> and it's just the most random thing. Like we're underwater, and then randomly the moon. Just yeah, he's like <laughs> Higuma, the mountain <laughs> bandit, the strongest bandit in the world. Oh uh, man, this version good. of Oda. I need competitive Oda is the best Oda. That's yeah, funny. yeah. And the thing is, we're not making this up. He's he has go, he has been on record being competitive. And go that was watch those that shorts. Was last year, I'm telling right? you, uh, twenty-eight. 2021 was the uh, Detective Conan one yeah. where he was. That was 2021. Extremely... Man, time goes by fast. Yeah, man. Yeah, so that, that I feel was... like we're getting older by the day. I mean, yeah. we are, but yeah. you know, it's like, dang. I I just look back. It's like it's already been a couple of years, man. What's going on? Yeah. Or 20. Oh no no no! no, no. It's 2022. 2022, 2022 was because last year was, was the interview. Fifth, yeah. yeah yeah. Last year was Gear Fifth, and it was before Film also, Red. Also, you know so... what's interesting? One last thing too, but. 
you, you know how like we say Luffy is kind of like a Tom and Jerry s character. I was mm -hmm. going through Tom and Jerry to like find a, a goofy little image for this chapter. And I realized that Tom and Jerry created light holograms and clones of themselves in one episode. Mm. In, in, in a recent episode, like I think it was like 2022 or 2023. Oh, wow. Yeah, because because it was like oh, from a movie. It was from a, it was from a, like I think one of my it was like a recent Tom and Jerry movie where uh, I think Tom created a bunch of clones and so did Jerry or vice versa. Like Jerry created clones and then yeah. Tom created clones. And it's like, wow. Like, and then we have Kizaru clones, which obviously we, he could probably do from the get, but now it's seeing that, I'm just like, I'm more inclined to believe that Luffy could also create clones. And Luffy has mentioned that yeah. he's just one guy, he can't protect everything, but I was like, the best way to protect everyone is to create clones, you know? Yeah. Like, having a Luffy everywhere is kind of crazy. And then, and then he's gonna he's gonna and this is the thing, this is why I thought about it before, is the Naruto thing, right? Like, Naruto is huge, and it's like We've seen how he's memed Naruto, but this would be an example of, uh, you know, people are so afraid of like Kaguya being in the story, yeah. for example. But Kaguya is like a, it's like a core Japanese like story. You know what I mean? Like it wouldn't be weird for Kaguya. In fact, Kaguya is, o Oda already yeah. wrote in Kaguya, Kaguya in a weird way. Canon in One Piece. Yeah. And so, not, you know, not like, are like Naruto oh, Kaguya, gonna... but like a, a One Piece yeah. version of Kaguya who's probably not yeah. real, but yeah. Yeah, like I, I, like Kaguya is as mythical as Nika in the at One this, Piece at this point. Yeah, and if you're wondering we, where we got and, that from, it's an SBS with Panda Man. Yeah, yeah, where it it, it this this is partially why uh, Panda Man is such a big deal in my opinion, but Kaguya as well. But the overarching thing being that uh, like he memes things in one way, but then this is like an, a a situation where he could. You know, just because he has Kaguya doesn't mean it's going to go the same route as another story yeah. that it's like how we memed about uh, Gojo dying in one piece. Yeah, yeah. And then Press and then piece. but and then in this situation, the clone thing, it's like, well, n with Naruto's ones, it's not like each clone is synced together, for example. Yeah. Or, but like but like Luffy's one would be insane. Uh, Luffy's one would be kind of funny. You know what? What's up? Oh, my God. No, Luffy's going to copy Vegapunk. And have satellites. He's gonna be the Stella. That would be because cool. he's a star. And another thing too with with Luffy creating clones is that when Raizo was first introduced, I think it was he did the yeah Raizo did the clone thing, and they were he was super impressed by that. And I think you said Brago made a, a video like that, and you kind of agree with the idea that when Luffy thinks something is really cool, he'll pull it off himself. Yeah, we talked yeah. about it. Me, me and Brago, we talk so much, but sometimes we just don't post like like. <laughs> Like, yeah, there, there's we, a lot of talk, cut content yeah. between YouTubers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, like, you know, that one was a... We talked a lot about different things. But this, um, the clone... Yeah, no. And like, you know what? Luffy agenda. might even go... Luffy might even go, nin, nin, and then clone. Because he just remembers right... Yo, I'm I'm here for it. Next, next, next chapter, chapter is titled Luffy Clones. Nin. Yeah, Nin Nin Luffy. Gear 5 model Nin Nin. <laughs> like, I don't even know. <laughs> oh, this is sick. What I a great like chapter. I, I love it. how we spent a majority of this video not even talking about the chapter, just like tangents. Yeah, you could probably cut out and make an equally sized, enjoyable oh, yeah. package. I of, think I yeah. think the full the full thing is gonna be for Patreon because I'm 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 editing's card, so yeah, the, yeah, the, the full sense. thing will be there for Patreon members who want to listen to all of our tangents. But if you don't, then you're on here on YouTube and you're getting the, the cut and edited version. How long have you been recording? Yeah. We've been recording for almost four hours. Yeah, we were supposed to do 50-50. I, I, I then... can't wait until this gets on YouTube and there's only, I think, one hour of content. And but leaving this ending part because the part that everyone's missing is when we expose the real Oda. Yeah. How Oda really that, that's is. Gonna be cut. Some of that. Yeah. The some of it of might come, come this, in this there. This part's gonna be in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of it will be probably infused into conversation, but it's like cutting out filler. Just, just know that Oda is probably the most competitive like person ever. Like a period. Like it's insane. But in a fun he way. Went, in, a, in, in a fun, yeah, nice, in a, in a like, fun... Uh, goofy, goofy way. Oda is really competitive. <laughs> it, it's it's like when you see a kid on the street and he's trying to like race against a car and then you upshine the kid by running past him and tripping him. That's Oda. But in, in a lighthearted <laughs> yeah. way, of course. And Oda inspires so many videos because based on, uh, you know, going off that too, I got a video coming up about how Elbaf is going to be a really musical 
island. Ooh, and that's I... that that goes back to not just the ancient robot and how like all that other stuff, but it's because of how One Piece was inspired by Vicky the Viking. And in Vicky the Viking, with all the giants, a lot of them were musicians. Yeah, 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 yeah. He wrote that. He yeah. wrote that. Yeah. So I, I think I think Elbaf is gonna be not not like a musical like Big Mom's Whole Cake Island, but I think they're gonna have a couple of tunes that will uh will will get there. We don't know what they do at the Winter Solstice other than fasting. Nope. The festival. So and that, that, and that festival that... is for the sun god. Mm -hmm. So there's probably a song coming in our song way. Song and dance, brothers. And yeah. if it, if it is then... Warland, who sings more than people at war? Exactly. That, that is a you true know, thing. The... If you ever like see any blues. wars, like people, people, they got nothing else to do, so they sing. They they yeah. sing a lot. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of around Swift, the campfire, believe it or not. I did not know that. I was thinking about like oh, back in the day because like now we have like sorry. Apple Music. I said sorry to to the viewers just there, not you, Har. Oh, yeah. okay. I, I moved the camera by accident. Oh, I didn't notice. Yeah, yeah, yeah you can't see it. That's gotcha. because you're Asian and you have squinty eyes. Yeah, exactly. It was like a blurry. Uh, I game. own it. As long as you own it, it's everything's okay. Yes, yes. You know, I got mistaken once as a... This happens often. I went to a, a noodle restaurant, and people thought I was a server there just because I was Asian. Well, with that being said, <laughs> hey, thank, <laughs> thank you guys for coming into this week's chapter. Um, Hopefully, you got your fix of me and Par. We talked for a very long time. Uh, Sorry if we yeah. went on a lot of tangents, but this is a tangential chapter. You know, we, we, we hit one point, and then boom, we go. It, it branches off. It branches off like Adam yes. would. It's indestructible. You can't you can't break <laughs> us. Our bond is uh, inseparable. You know how it is. And uh, thank you, Par, again for joining us. I'm sure I don't need to link you down below, but I will anyways. And um, yeah, catch you guys later. Peace out.